<laughs> yeah, see. All right, let's get it. All right, welcome back, y'all. This is episode five of the No Filter Tattoo Podcast. I'm back. Your uh, host, Theo, with my other host, Tez. Yeah. Spike. Right, he, he, oh, he, nah, he, nah, he Spike Lawyer, all 2024. I, 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 I told him that yesterday. Respectful. All right, and then, of course, today we got special guest, my boy, Elijah. Um, Elijah Keem is an award-winning tattoo artist. He's a co-owner of Incorporated Tattoo in Marietta, Georgia. Yeah, applause. You got to do the applause. I appreciate that. <laughs> Put the cup down. Man, um, I'm going to hype you up real quick, bro. You do amazing black and gray realism tattoos, but with a, I like how you combine fine line and like mandalas, geometric, all that good stuff. Uh, bro, so like, how you feeling today, man? Feeling great, man. Uh, appreciate you guys for having me here. Uh, I haven't done a podcast in... Okay. Since like 2016 or something. It's been a minute. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. man. Yeah, bro. Oh, wow. Welcome to the podcast yeah, yeah. game, bro. <laughs> well, welcome Appreciate back. Y'all. All right. Um, so, but yeah, man, how your year starting out so far? Um, my year is actually going pretty well. Um, as you talked about, co-owner of Incorporated Tattoo. So we recently just moved into a, a bigger location. Nice, nice. So right now it's still like um, just putting all the pieces together, like okay. trying to build that 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 foundation that we had in our old location, which was a little bit smaller, a little bit more intimate. So now we're in a, a larger location with more people. So we're just, you know, piecing things together, trying to make sure every everybody that's a part of the family fits and feels like they're they're they don't feel new. We want everybody right. to feel yeah, like constantly growing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So nah, but yeah, year's been going great. Can't complain. I'm excited to to see what this year brings. You got any New Year's resolutions or goals, bro? Um, my only New Year's resolution is uh, why wait for tomorrow for what you can do today? Because I mm. procrastinated a lot um, just throughout my life, but the last couple years, I keep telling myself, "Oh yeah, today I'm a I'm a do this," and then today come and I don't do it, and then I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna start on a Monday because that's the best day to start," or I'm gonna start at the beginning of the year. So now I'm just Let's just go for it. Bro. Yeah, yeah, today today is the same as tomorrow is the same yeah. as yesterday. It's like, am I doing something at five o'clock? I can start now. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay. So yeah, that's my New Year's resolution. Nah, that's dope. That's a that's a real good resolution, bro. Like, um, I'm definitely all for that. I'm I'm all for like just seize the moment. Um, yeah, a lot of people just kind of talk about it, and you know they even make plans, but they never actually put the action behind the words or the thoughts. And to me, that's the biggest thing. That's the the biggest hurdle to get over. So yeah, um, I'm definitely sure I'm gonna add that to mine too, bro. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, still yeah. that. Yeah, take that. Yeah, but yeah, like I said, we appreciate you coming on today, man. So uh, to get started first, let's uh, let's get the viewers, man, to to get a little bit to know you a little bit better, right? Um, so how long have you been tattooing, and like when did you start? So I've been tattooing um ten years now. Okay, um, it made yeah. ten, it made ten years last September. Okay, um, I started in in college, um, just almost like you go to uh, South Georgia State College. Okay, okay. Good. what was you majoring in? Um, communications at the time, so I was actually okay, okay. in. Do I was supposed to be doing stuff like this? Like, oh wow, okay. it was in your blood. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. I actually, before I started tattooing, I was actually doing YouTube comedy skits. Well, so okay, yeah, okay. like I was, I was pre Vine, pre Damn, pre okay. uh, like any person oh, that and, you and see on like in pre the yeah pre DDG in all in the universe. You'd be yeah, like, like a one of the, like a Desi Banks, a Drewski, or something mm-hmm, like that. Right yeah, now, like he wasn't tattooing. Exactly, exactly. So crazy. I started. I started. Um, doing comedy skits in 2008 on YouTube and stuff like that. Um, and can they still see these videos today? Yeah, yeah, they're still on there. I ain't gonna okay. tell y'all the link. You just gotta go. You gotta go <laughs> you gotta search find it. Find it. You go find it because I sometimes I go back and look, and they're a bit cringy to me. So I'm, uh, man, right. man. you know so, how we are about our own stuff. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So with that being said, like if you know, you know type. So <laughs> okay, if you can man. find it, then go for it. But yeah. um, but yeah, I was in school communications major and while I was in school I took a video broadcasting class um, after I had finished all my um, general ed classes and when I was in class um, my professor she gave us an assignment she didn't like my response to the assignment which was like which what, what, what was one thing that you learned during doing this process mm-hmm. during this process which had to do with um, she wanted us to like make a YouTube account and then try to get subscribers or something like that. And I was like, oh, I didn't really learn much because I've already been doing this for years. And she was like, if you put something else like that again, um, I'm going to fail you. And um, I just didn't like somebody having that much control over me. And it made me feel like if I really got into this field Mm -hmm. that 
it would start feeling like a job rather than a hobby yeah, or yeah, whatever. That about yeah, what exactly. Mean, it's like she literally crushed my my passion almost th- that day. And that's kind of what led me into tattooing. So she kind of saved she saved me in a in a certain right, way. Right. Yeah. Um but yeah, she said that and then I was like, man, I kind of want to start tattooing. And it was just like a random thought and then I was home for a summer break. But did you draw before or were or was it like it all started at the same time, like drawing. That's exactly it. what I was about to yeah. get into. Um, was home for summer break, and um, um, I love my wife, but at the time, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying it's pre marriage. I was on, I was on Instagram, and a girl was like, "Yo, um, does anybody know any good tattoo artists in Atlanta?" And I just clicked on her page, and then like it wasn't like nothing to it in terms of her page, but in my mind, I was just like, "Man, I bet you tattoo or tattoo artists get a bunch of girls and money." Yeah, I was like, rock star life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, "Yo, you know what? I'm about to, I'm about to see what I can do." So my right. my brother actually grew up as the artist in the family. Okay. My older brother. So I just like looked up to him and wanted yeah. to kind of follow everything he did. So at one point he was doing tattoos and stuff. Um, but at this time, like he he was like onto other stuff. Okay. And I was just like, "Yo, I remember him like learning how to draw." So I was like, "Yo, I'm about to just teach myself." So I started mm-hmm. teaching myself how to draw. Went back to school, got my refund check, brought my first tattoo machine off of like Amazon or eBay. Do you remember and, the uh, machine name? Nah, it, it didn't like have a Chinese name. Yeah, yeah, it, it was didn't have it. a name. Yeah, <laughs> okay. some coil machine, okay. and just ran it up from from then. So, um, so I'm assuming you started like self taught, but um, mm-hmm. did you ever like get an apprenticeship, or was it something like you just kind of got good enough to get in a shop, and then from there you just kind of learned and got better? So, um, it was almost a combination of both. I finagled my way, so. I've reached around, minutes. yeah, yeah. I reached around to like um, shops trying to get apprenticeships and stuff, and I'll skip the whole backstory. But I ended up um, coming across um, Incorporated Tattoos. The owner there is um, Tony, aka Why Shout Not. Tony. Shout out to Tony. Um, mm-hmm. Met Tony. I was like, look, I'm trying to get an apprenticeship. At this time, I had already been tattooing like a year and some change, but I didn't tell him that. I was just like, yo, I'm trying to learn how to tattoo and stuff. And he was like, okay, cool, Um, come in on Monday, um, and we'll see. We'll go from there. At the time, I was working at a warehouse. So, um, How long you was working at the warehouse? At this time, I had been working at the warehouse like a couple months or whatever. Um, I ain't doing this shit no more. (laughs) So, like, I was working at a warehouse. I I came up to the shop for, like, the first day, still kind of not knowing what was going on. But I was, like, just doing whatever he needed. Um, I think Wednesday was the last day I ever went to a, a regular job. Like, I could, yeah, yeah like, okay. I, I, le- I, I left that Wednesday and I never went back. You went um, there Monday and then Wednesday. I went there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday was a, like, yeah, and I was going confident. to, I was I doing like both. It. And I went to, like, once I got to shop on Wednesday, I never went back to a regular job. Like, okay. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't have any source of income coming in. I'm going to make it, though. Yeah, exactly. Like, so for for the people that don't know, when you're an apprentice, you don't get paid. So I didn't have any other, any other income. Um... And I was at the shop for a few months, and then one day I was bored, and I tattooed myself. I did this. Probably can't see it, but I did this tattoo on my hand. Zoom in, no okay. worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all see that? At the time, I wanted to be a new school artist, so it's like a okay, flower damn, bomb, a rose right. flower bomb. Um, I had did that, and Tony Cini, he was like, bro, I didn't know you knew how to tattoo. And I was like, yeah, man, I tattooed for like a year or so. He was like, bro, you don't... Could've just been, start, yeah, right? just, bro. Set you up a booth. It's time yeah. to start working. So after that, it was just okay. it was up after that, and then I was. That year back then, tattooing, I know like like 2024 is kind of different based off like probably 2014. Mm -hmm. How was that year for you going into it? Um, Was he saying like was it busy or something back then? Like business wise. like So um, I feel like I'm one of those people that kind of, I base my, um, my logic based on what I think others would, would move, would get them to. The best way to explain it is like, I knew it, what you said earlier, fake it till you make it type thing. So okay, the yeah. best way to explain it was when I, when I got into tattooing, I had already had like 17,000 followers pre, pre-tattooing. Yeah. That was from the comedy game? It was or, from or, comedy, from, I used to do like shout outs and stuff like that. Okay. Um, okay. Tyreek Hill, he probably don't even remember, he used to ask me for shout outs on Instagram uh, and stuff yeah, like that. Crazy, yeah, man. so we used to yeah. hoop together. Um, yeah. but so yeah. you hooper too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, get you on the court. Yeah, new yeah. teammate. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, <laughs> But anyway, so I already had a bunch of followers on 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 Instagram at this time. So once I started tattooing, I kind of like 
got rid of most of the other stuff and just left like the artwork. Mm -hmm. So that way when people started like seeing me tattooing, yeah. your first thought is at this time, 17,000 followers on Instagram is a lot. Yeah. Right. Like, that's a yeah. lot. At that time? Yeah. 2014, that's yeah. a lot. So it might've been 2015, but we'll just call it one or the other. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, People would see that and just assumed, oh, he's bubbling because of tattooing. Okay. So yeah. you want to support me because you think everybody else is already supporting right, me. Right. So right. you don't, you're not concerned about, oh, he's just starting out. He got 150 right. followers. Leave it up to the imagination. Oh, yeah, I don't yeah. know if I can trust him or whatever. You come on there, you see I'm already getting likes and comments. You just assume, right. oh, yeah, he's been he's been right. doing what he's got doing. He's followers, said it. So he, he must exactly. be good. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it might have corrected. Exactly. Right. So, and I never told anybody. Any Anything different. other, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like, let you I believe mean, right. whatever you wanted to believe. So yeah. I I kind of, I wasn't like instantly booked by any means, but yeah. I had a I had an outlet quick. So it okay. was easy for me to start being like, hey, come get tattooed and stuff like that. So that's kind of how it started. But please believe I went through a, a long, slow period of just so, making okay. ends meet. So how long did it take where you felt like you were good, I guess you would say? I, I mean, I know you probably still feel like you're trying to get better, right? But, but like... I guess into the terms of like, man, uh, the, you're better than the average artist. Let's say that. Mm. And keep in mind, I did see you last year sitting there front row when you won that first place. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, for I sure. saw you. I said, you know, know he got this trophy. Um, when did I realize I was good? Probably maybe, mm, like, maybe like two, three years ago. Okay. Damn, yeah. Okay. So about seven years. Seven years. Took about, yeah, it took about seven years before I can consistently like what I was putting out. Okay. So I was liking tech. Like it took about four years, four to five years, probably four years before I actually was like, yo, I really like this tattoo or whatever. A lot mm -hmm. of times I would like a tattoo, they would leave and then I would hate it a, like, oh, yeah. a couple yeah. months later. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, bro. Like, shoot, if that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, sometimes it sometimes it's right there. Like, as soon as they yeah. leave, like, you're well, looking you at the pictures. When, when you about to post it, you realize, man, this ain't oh, man. Like, That's the yeah. worst, man. When you like finish a tattoo, you doing the tattoo the whole time, you think you're killing it, and then you you done, look at the pictures, like, I hate this shit, bro. Yeah. Like, no, nah, yeah. man. But, so, yeah, I would say it took about five years before I, like, I really started like liking pieces and then about between five to seven for consistently liking pieces mm, okay. to consistently put out quality work where mm -hmm. it feels like where it feels like most of the time if I do if I do a if I do a a tattoo now that isn't my best work it's still better than a lot of other work that we would that see is on, yeah. on I never social media of that like that. and yeah. that's when I realized okay now I'm at a point where it's like Although this might not have be what I what I have wanted it to be, uh -huh. it's still quality work. Exactly, you know right? What I'm saying like so. The fundamentals yeah. are there. Exactly, right? okay. like my foundation is, is is there now. Okay, no, that's, that's dope, man. So, been tattooing ten years. You said it took you about seven to get good. Um, so you you said something. You said like you wanted to be a new school artist at first. Like mm -hmm. so, like how did you go from like wanting to do new school to doing like fine line black and gray? Um, do you do color? Nah, nah, I haven't done do color. Do you know how to do color, though, if you had to? Shit. Um, it's been eight years, so I'm sure <laughs> the, 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 the application and how yeah, to do still, things still. is a lot different. But I feel like if I had to do it, I you probably could. Pull it could off. Because, okay. you know, it's like one of those things, if you know enough, you can probably yeah. take it into other... You know, you know yeah. the basics. You know how to yeah, pack exactly. black, you know how to pack yeah. color, you know exactly. what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so, but my color theory would be terrible, stuff like that. Uh, like, oh, I wouldn't okay. have the foundation on that, but I wouldn't know how to apply color. Right, yeah, okay. I could probably have it saturated and things like that. Um. Um, how I ended up doing uh, black and gray, it's a that's two parts to it. One part was I, I was coming into it. I was more of like a chameleon in terms of I didn't really know what I wanted. So I would my interests were based on the interests of people around me, the okay. artists that were around. So were me you at the like time. versatile in the beginning? Like you tried to do everything, mm -hmm. or just whatever kinda, they were did? Kinda. It was more so like let's say like. I was new and I started working here and mm -hmm. you really loved doing mandalas. Mm -hmm. I would be like, oh, mandalas are cool to do right. just based off of you right. liking it or if you okay. want to do okay. portraits or if you wanted to do a uh, new school or whatever. Yeah. I would like whatever kind of the next person. Of the, yeah. okay. Okay. So there was an artist that was that was that I was working with at the time that was really into like mandalas and sacred geometry and stuff like that. And him liking it made me want to like it. Okay. Um, but how I ended up going there instead of new school was because of the fact of when I first started out, 
percent of my clientele was was black people, yeah. uh, melanated color skin. And at this time, it was a lot harder to to figure out how to get bold colors on yeah, yeah. on mm-hmm. on melanated skin. Nowadays, there's a lot of artists that do it and stuff yeah. like that. But when at this time, oh, yeah, there was nah, a lot yeah. of insight on it, things like it that. Yeah, definitely wasn't so, widespread like that. Exactly. So and yeah, then, Atlanta's known for black and gray majority of the time. Yeah, yeah, and people weren't coming to me to do new school. I wanted to do new school because yeah. of Craig Foster. Like I used oh, to yeah. watch Ink Master. Got, okay. One of my um. Early tattoos in Craig Foster. Yeah, like, shout out to Craig. Yeah, yeah. yeah. shout, shout, shout out to Craig. Shout, shout out, out to Craig, Craig man. Yeah. You gotta um, get him one day. <laughs> he 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 inspired me as a black tattoo artist and stuff mm. like that. And I really, like I said, I was kind of into what other people were into, especially if they look like me. So he right. was into new school, and I thought it was cool. I thought it was creative. Okay. And so I was drawing like new school pieces and stuff, but it, it was hard to get people to even yeah. want new school back then, especially if your clientele was black. Nah, definitely, um, definitely. So I was like, all right, yeah, you know what? It's true. I just focus on black and gray, and then I was like, I'll come back to the color. And then as I started doing black and gray, I was like, Yo, a uh, voice cracked like thirty seconds ago. Um, <laughs> I wanted to, um, I, I wanted to. I got to a point where then I was like, man, I just want to master black and gray. And yeah. I'm still at least 10 years out from mastering it. So who knows if there's ever a chance of me doing color. Okay. Now, okay. You, since you said you was a, a pretty much a chameleon as far as finding your style, do you think any of those techniques helped you with your style now? Um, so, I mean, yeah, technically, because like I said, I probably – I probably wouldn't enjoy doing mandalas and stuff mm-hmm. if it wasn't for that artist that I was around at the time mm-hmm. enjoying mandalas. Because the funny thing is, Tony hates mandalas. Like, he can't stand it. <laughs> and he always, like, commends me every time I do. He's like, bro, I don't know how you be doing all them little tiny little details and stuff yeah. like that. And it's just like, bro, it's just, it's, it's so normal to me or whatever. Yeah, but if, if at the time, if it was just Tony that I was working with at the time when I came to the shop, then I probably would hate dollars right now. Crazy, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So that's, practice making that's a improvement. good point to make. Like, so do you feel like a lot of um, younger artists they they're in shops where they might not be around the the best artists? Do you feel like that'll affect how they grow? Like you saying, like, all right, I, my style was kind of grew because of the artists I was around. So do you feel like, or let's say, an artist wants to um, specialize in what you do now, mm-hmm. but they're not in the shop that has like the the right environment for that? Like, what what advice would you give them? to, to kind of go down the path that you're at now? Mm, I would say, I would say you kind of, you, unfortunately you have to learn on your own at that point. Yeah. Um, find, it's like, tattooing is so weird. Like, it's yeah. just find, find, find what you like. At the there's end so many different paths to tattoo. Yeah, there's the end so, there's goal is to do a great tattoo. Exactly. Yep. So it's like, for instance, like, um, right now we have an apprentice and we have multiple apprentices. Okay. Um, but one of the apprentices, um, she was asking about doing this flash sheet and she was like, they were like, um, they were essentially full body portraits mm-hmm. of like realistic portraits. Oh, damn. Okay. And she wanted to make them into flash sheets. And but they were like roughly like this big. Like they were like Yeah, they outrageous. were they were like super small. And I'm like, I was like, the first thing I said was, I was like, nah, I wouldn't, I was like, nah, that wouldn't really work as a as a um as a flash. I was like, Cause you can't do those a certain way, and then literally, as I'm saying, I'm like, scratch everything I just said. I was like, try it out. I was like, because I'm limiting you, your abilities based on what my abilities are. Mm, I was okay. like, try it out and see if it works. Because I'm not gonna tell you that you can't do this. Yeah. Because who am I to say that you can't? Because mm-hmm. if you just go based on what I can do, then you can only go, you're only gonna be able to do what I can do. And sure enough, she pulled it off. Yeah, okay. Like sometimes, some things it's just about off. trying. Yeah, I mean that's, that's, that's definitely face face literally this big, bro. This big with de- it's wearing sunglasses and everything. New generation, man. They like, they coming bro. up with new techniques, new yeah. nice. new styles all the time, bro. So do you think uh like even as a mentor, do you kind of this will be like the longevity as well when it comes to stuff like that as well? Because there's um, pros and cons to anything for sure. Um, so right now, I'm not. When she's, because all of this is like practice skin and stuff like okay, that. Okay. So, so she's getting used to the, the machine exactly. And so I'm more so, I'm more so letting them be who they are as an artist first. Okay. Before we go down the route of of this doesn't work or that doesn't work because if we all just went based on what we believed was always going to work, we'd mm-hmm. all still be in here doing traditional. You yeah, know what I'm saying? That's correct. Yeah, true. So it's like everybody said, oh, you can't do realism because realism doesn't last. Mm-hmm. Things like that. So it's like. I'm not even so much concerned about the the longevity as of right now as okay. much as I am with 
Expressing not telling, yeah, yeah, not yeah, telling people yeah. no. You don't want to restrict their growth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So no, I respect that. That's, that's a good. Art is very open. Because yeah. I'll be honest, like me as a mentor, I'm kind of, I'm more on like that now. Like I want you to know like the fundamentals, the fundamentals. and like then you become an artist as, mm-hmm. as you go. But so that's a good take. We, we could definitely get in more into that later on. Yeah. Is that's, that's a whole rabbit hole to go down oh, there yeah. right there. I, I got so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Bet perfect. Uh, perfect. Um. So, I want to also we want to get to know more about you though before we get down that. Yeah. So, like I said, for you're not only the co-owner of uh, Incorporated, but you're you're an entrepreneur in a lot of different ways. You you also, um, what you came up with the the a party game right? It's called mm-hmm. the CP Time Game. Mm-hmm. And um, you have two. Two. Oh, okay. What's the other one? Um, so I also have a roll call, which is under the CP time umbrella. Oh, so, yeah. so how do you, so just tell me, how'd you get into that? Like, well, how'd you come up with the ideas? How, how did the actual like marketing and like getting manufactured and released and stuff like, how did that go? Um, so man, there's so many layers to it. Um, I bet, man. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll make a, make a, a long story as, as short as possible without skipping too much detail. The, the idea initially came from me and my family. We love having, um, like, game nights, family nights, things like that. Mm-hmm. And we, okay. we we tend to, like, especially at this what time. What was your favorite game? Like, Space, Uno? Or? And that's exactly what I was about to get into on how we got to the game that I came up with. So, um, one of the games we always played at our, our game nights was called Five Second Rule. Okay. The way Five okay. Second Rule works is it asks you a question, and it always says, like, name three and then it has something, and then you flip the timer. You have to answer before the timer ran, runs out or whatever, and it was always five seconds. A lot of pressure. So, yeah, so you, you only have five seconds to answer every time. So Encourage quick thinking. Exactly. So, for instance, let's say let's say um, I might come up with this just out of necessity because it just popped up, like mm-hmm. a tattoo version, right? Right. Let's say I'm like, li- list three or name three tattoo styles. Okay. And you would have to answer before the five second runs okay, out. Okay. But you, of course, you don't never, you never know what your question is going to be. Oh. So, what happened was we were playing the game, and we would play all the time. And for whatever reason, this specific time, we asked a question, and I can't remember what it was, but it was name three of something. And the person, it, I think it was like name three so and so movies of a certain person. Mm-hmm. Nobody knew who the person was, and I'm like, bro, I don't know who this is. Like, yeah. I was, like I'm upset because I'm like, bro. So I was just like, yo, what if we had like our own version where we have like people, like things and people that relate to us? My fault. Yeah. Um, like we had, uh, like rappers and movies oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and and songs and culture. yeah, yeah. Like, like pop culture things that yeah. relate to us and that we can actually like, like where we don't have to question who is Drake. Or we don't yeah. have a question, like stuff like right. that. Like we know what's up. So I was like, I literally was sitting there, like as I, and as I'm saying this out loud, because like at the time I was the one that read the question to the person I was supposed to be answering or whatever. As I'm um, reading the the or as I'm talking about this, I'm like, yo, what if we had one and it has our questions or whatever? And then I was like, um. I can't remember what came first, the name or the concept in terms of my timer. Mm -hmm. So the reason why mine is the way it is is because instead of five seconds, mine is random. The amount of time you have to answer is random. So you might have three seconds, five seconds, ten seconds, seven seconds, anything in between three to ten or whatever. And the reason why it's called CP time is because of that. Mm -hmm. So it's like you don't know how much time you have because, you know, stereotypically – CP time is like, oh, they might show up on time. They might show five minutes late. They oh, might like show a tattoo artist like, lifestyle. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the, that's how I came up with the name CP time. And I thought of all of this right there on the spot. Um, Are you undefeated? Nah, I suck at the game. Dang, because right? it's hard. <laughs> because it, it's too. It's there's a lot of pressure and it's too. It's too unpredictable. Like yeah. every yeah. single time. Like even if you get the same question every time mm-hmm. since your time is random you still are going to struggle with it like okay. so it's yeah. it's it's a it's it's super it's super fun um and before i go into the manufacturer side the reason how i ended up doing it was just because like for me i'm a creator bro like i don't even think i'm i still don't believe i'm an artist or whatever i know i'm an artist but i don't believe in like that's what i do like right. my, yeah. when i just restricted to exactly that. i'm a creator i love to create i love yeah. to come yeah. up with things mm-hmm. like that's like that's where my passion is i love building things from like the ground up and stuff like that mm-hmm. i can I could definitely relate that, that. No, yeah, I, so that's no bro but um yeah so came with the idea took a long time to actually create it because I couldn't find 
the timer. That was the hardest part. Okay. Finding the timer was was super difficult. So I leveraged my social media platform to f- help me outsource somebody that could possibly find it for me. So I was like, yo, if anybody can find exactly what I'm looking for, I'll give you a free tattoo or I'll send you some money on Cash App. Okay. okay. Yeah, so I literally made that post and I got hundreds of just submissions and nobody could find what I was looking for. I was like, no, this is not it. Everybody was sending me all this stuff. And I was like, no, this is not what I'm looking for. And I kept like adding more to my story, like getting more specific each time because people kept sending me the same type of stuff. And randomly, like after like probably like, I don't know how long, it was a long time. A girl sent me exactly what I was looking for. And I sent her some bread. And um, I ain't going to say how much, but sent her some bread. You looked out for yeah, it. Yeah, or, no, no. or whatever. Um, so, yeah, and then after that, the luckily the person that made the, the timer for me was able to produce the actual cards and everything that, like that for me. So my job was just designing designing the product, coming up with all the questions, um, coming up with the rules. And this is pre chat GPT so I didn't so yeah, I didn't had, yeah I had to actually get down <laughs> yeah. in them trenches and figure yeah. it out so how long did it take you to come up with all like all the uh, questions and all that you would say so for CP time it probably took me about um I want to say it probably took me about altogether from 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 thinking about it into to actually creating it probably about 2 years or a year and a half okay. for roll call that one probably from creating it from or thinking of it to actually coming up with like everything that I needed to put it into production that probably took me maybe like two weeks. Oh, because you already experienced and kind of I knew everything. And this one was so it was it was it spoke to my soul. So I was able to come up with the questions in like a couple days. I come up with I came up with the roll call released already or yeah roll call is out. Roll call is actually by paper um um more successful than C P time in terms of um, volume sales mm-hmm. um, in comparison to CP time, but they're both super successful. Yeah, no, I actually, I'm, I'm gonna get give me. Yeah, uh, please. I should have brought some. Um, yeah, I have roll call in the car. Yeah, like I actually, I actually do better selling games than tattooing That's for crazy. sure. So by well. uh, yeah, by a large margin. Why do you think that? It's, it's just um, easier to, to move a, a game. Yeah, because because I only have to create the game once and sell it forever, whereas tattooing I have to do that every from. day. Exactly. Yeah. So with the games, like I just I just created the games, made um so like on Amazon or Yeah, so it? Amazon, I'll be killing on Amazon. Um Man, I love to hear I, that. um I sell on my website or whatever as well. Um you would say Amazon's the main seller though. Or? So yeah, now Amazon's the main seller. Before that, it was the website. Um, okay. But yeah, like, do you yeah. think it's important for us as tattoo artists to have like different outlet income? Yeah, outlet stuff like that. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, my first, my first thing that I did was I created an aftercare line. Um, back in the day. Matter of fact, this yeah, is actually okay. a little. Uh, oh, it's such a a a, a gym because nobody yeah. knows that it was me that created it, and. I'm not sure if you responded. Do you remember it was a cuz I I think I sent it to you. It was called Helix. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was me that created that. What? And I didn't want people to know that Smart. I made it yeah. because I didn't want people to judge the quality or anything about the product based mm-hmm. on who I was. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I kept it blind and I just used that yeah. that to to send like I would hit up artists mm-hmm. or I would just ask people for the address like, "Hey, I want I want to send this or whatever, see if you like it or whatever." The reason why I stopped doing Helix because it wasn't passive. The, the yeah, bigger, the bigger I became, work. the more work I had to do. Yeah, so it yeah. wasn't what I actually wanted out of it or whatever. Because yeah. it would take me like two hours just to make like fifty of them. Damn, so, yeah. in a in a shop set, twenty four came in it. So imagine a bunch of shops are ordering. Like right. now, yeah. I can't do nothing. Can't yeah. Can't yeah. So anything. I was just like, yeah. So I had to I had to give up on that dream. And then sneaker restoration. Um, okay, damn, man. Man, I'm talent. Yeah, yeah. When I when I was in middle school, I sold candy and stuff like that so I can buy... Really, everything that I do is just based on me being able to buy what I want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whatever, so you, so. you always been an entrepreneur, man. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's yeah. just in your blood, bro. Yeah, uh, for sure. Nah, I respect that, man. To me, that's that's the biggest struggle now is like trying to find passive um, sources of income, like truly passive, like you said. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, you spend the time creating it, but like you can just leave it alone yeah. and have it stack up. Um, for me, uh, the only easy way, easiest one I've come to is just investing. Like, cause you mm-hmm. know, it's it's kind of like, are right, you just put some money away, boom, and let it sit. But mm-hmm. like, I admire like just the coming up with the the products He's and selling them out. out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I I would say um when it comes to like passive, passive income, 
um, there's different ways to go about it. It's finding finding what's missing, mm-hmm. or or um, or just really just sitting back and thinking think what what kind of relates to you. So mm-hmm. like for instance, like before we started shooting, we, you talked about you haven't done a seminar in a long time. All right. You can create passive income. That's, just that's something just, I've been thinking yeah, about. Just yeah. based off of that, because you already have cameras. Just right. record your seminars. Right. Daniel Silva did it for yeah. a long time, and he was selling them for like fifteen hundred right. per per thing or whatever. So you record one time, you put it out one time, and you can let that sit for yeah. the rest of your life. Yeah. You can Facts. update it Facts. if need yeah. be. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's already there. So even if even if nobody buys it or if everybody buys it, mm-hmm. you're not losing because you only right. it's it's create once, sell forever, and that's mm-hmm. the way to go about it. Um. Oh, that's you're exactly so. right, bro. Like that's actually something I've been thinking about for a while, and uh, like I was I was planning on doing it because um I was actually gonna have uh the guy. So there's a videographer I work with, Jordan. He um shout out to Jordan, man. Shout out to Jordan. Yeah, he 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 did our like YouTube bio videos, mm-hmm. and he actually helped us get our setup going with this gotcha. too. And then um, but I was gonna have him do the recording and editing just because that way I could focus on the actual teaching side. Yep. And um, but yeah, I just you know, the past year kind of got off track. So now 2024, that's that's definitely a goal I want I want to actually like commit to and do. Yeah, don't wait for tomorrow for yeah. what you can do today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember earlier, man. You you told me that um, Tony Tony um, he had incorporated, um, brought you on. Now you're a co-owner. Like, so how did that process go from you becoming like starting as an artist and becoming like partner? In the business, um, that kind of started based on one me, me showing him that I care about the growth of the shop. Mm-hmm. So similar mindset, yeah. Like, um, really invested into it. Yeah. So when I first got there, remember I was telling you guys like I had like seventeen thousand followers already and stuff like that, but I had two Instagram accounts. My other Instagram account I think had like I want to say like ten thousand or something like that. I was like, yo, we can, I'll delete my other, or not delete it, but I'll change my other Instagram account to the shop account. Like, I don't care. Like, I'll take all that stuff off there, and we'll just use it as a shop account. Mm -hmm. Like, so I came into it, like, willing to give and stuff like that. Exactly. And this was when I was still an apprentice, and just as I was there, it was just always, um, because when I first got there, there was only one other artist that was working there at the time. So three total? Yeah, so I made the third person once I got there or whatever. Um, and then that person left shortly after I got there for um, his own personal reasons or yeah. whatever. But most of them had to do with me coming there, we believe. <laughs> but um, but nonetheless, like, it was just like I was just invested into the shop. And I was mm-hmm. like, bro, like, I want to help the shop grow. I care about the shop and stuff like that. So it was just me and Tony for a long time. It was probably me and Tony for about, and I don't know, it had to be like three, three years at three, least, yeah. just me and him. Um, and then all that dedication. Yeah, exactly. Like, and we weren't even looking to hire other artists. We were just cool. We were cool. Like we were paying the bills and we just, we had our own thing. How many spaces did you have in the smaller shop Um, at that time? At at that time, there was three, there was two outside and he had his own room. So it was very similar to like, his room was like through a window, just like this. And all of this was his room. And then the other two booths were out there. So he had his own like Uh, private area or whatever. But me and him would still talk to each other and stuff like that. So it wasn't like, Hey man, I see you. Yeah, like he like um but for the most part we didn't really get super close until we renovated the first time where we like tore down his wall mm-hmm. and then we decided to open it up and that's when right. we had all the other artists um and that sounded like a little movie scene. Tear yeah. down his wall, man. We're close <laughs> yeah, yeah, so so we tore down the walls. We um like we for, but first we had a conversation about like, yo, I think it's time like we we try to like make it bigger, hire artists, things like that. So we tore down the walls. Um, we set it up, and then once we tore down the walls, we had space for six artists, not including, I mean, including me and him. So four new artists to to okay. join. Um, and then one, of course, once we did that, we were like, at this time, I had already been helping with the bills and stuff, so it was mm-hmm. just like, yo, let's me and you will be partners in it or whatever, and then we'll hire other people, and then we'll we'll work together to to see the greater good of the shop. Mm-hmm. And good. how many years was? Did it take until y'all kind of like did that? Um, so like I was probably wall break. Yeah, so I was probably there for roughly 
four years, maybe okay. four, maybe five. You know, like when you be tattooing, things just start running together in terms oh, yeah, of time. So I honestly can't tell you exactly what the the actual timeline is. Okay. I would have to look through my phone. Yeah, but um, but yeah, it was I would say maybe four or five years. All right, nice. Okay, cool, man. So that's dope, man. I, I love hearing like stories of just artists like like being committed, loyal, man, and then. Just being rewarded from that and just oh, that seeing it grow. Yeah, bro. So you, you definitely got a motivational story for a lot of young artists out there. Um, and speaking about young artists, back. yeah, bro. Like, but speaking about young artists, I know you mentioned earlier that you you got two apprentices right now. Mm, yeah, we have two. Um, man, let's let's yeah. talk about. Damn. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk about apprenticeships, man. Let's talk about because that's that's a hot topic right now in the industry, man. Like, how was your first experience apprenticing somebody for the first time? Shit. I mean, are these your first apprentices? Yeah, or? I was about to say okay. technically these. Are, okay, these so we got it fresh. These technically, to a certain degree, are my first apprentices in terms of every every bot or actually no, not really. We had some before that kind of, but it was very. It was all. It was all bit. in the last couple months, like okay, okay. last in the last like eight months or so. Okay. So, but everybody prior to that, me being just me being me and Tony just being very just giving and caring about people that we kind of just gave people everything that they wanted up front without ever mm-hmm. asking for anything in return yeah. thinking that they would just give us something in return be like how okay. you would. exactly yeah. like in our mind we thought yo we'll give you the 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 keys to 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 success and things like that take the horse to water exactly and in our mind we're thinking okay they're gonna give us something in return from that mm. but what kept happening and what what kept happening was we would feed into people, pour into people, and then they would just take everything that they got and do this or do that and stuff like that. So they wanted to skip the process. You know, yeah, they, exactly. they didn't want to put it back into the shop that exactly. The so what are you looking in? when a person first introduces themselves to say, "Hey, I want to apprentice under you"? Um. So. So. Um, I can say, what do you look for in, in an apprentice, yeah. potential apprentice? So. It's it's gonna sound funny because, like I know most people think, oh yeah, like solid portfolio and all this other stuff and mm-hmm. quality and stuff. But that I would be, I would be doing a disservice to somebody that could possibly be great by doing that because when I started out, yeah, I was terrible. Like my okay. drawings, same, same. <laughs> drawings yeah. awful. My tattoos yeah. Yeah. awful. Mm-hmm. Everything was bad. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I started learning how to draw at the same time I was learning how to tattoo. So it's not so much that like, um, and I want to talk about that a little bit later too. All but right. um, um, for me, what I look at is just what is your what is your what are you what are you looking for when you become a tattoo artist? Like, why do you want to be a tattoo right. artist? Like, things like that. You really have to why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more It's more. So it's more about them, like, yeah. what they want more than what I want mm-hmm. when, when they're coming to, to me or whatever. Um, yeah. So now I'm just, I just want to see that you, that you care. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, do you care? That's really what it boils down nah. to. Do you care? Yeah. No, nah, that's, that's real, man. Uh, so let's, let's really... Take a deep dive in apprenticeships um, and why it's such a controversial topic in this industry. Uh, I guess for our viewers who aren't familiar with apprenticeships and how tattoo, how the tattoo industry works. All right, Tess, you, you being like my first apprentice, I'm, like tell people like what a general apprenticeship is and how it works, like how long it takes, like what are you expected to do in an apprenticeship and stuff like that So for the people who don't know. Um, so during apprenticeships, uh, really – you're there to just like learn everything that you know that person is uh, giving you. Uh, for me, I would, I knew my art style was kind of more like a uh, cartoony, like new school. And when I was looking around, I did see Theo's portfolio, and I was like, "Well, he kind of draws similar to me. I think I could learn from this person." So you know, came by one day. Like, actually, I was living in the area before he even opened the shop, so I knew it wasn't here. And then I was in Atlanta for like a year. 2016? Yeah, 2016. 2015. And, I, you know, I was going to different shops, you know, at the time. Those shops didn't weren't looking for apprenticeships or whatever. And at that time, I also uh, was thinking that all apprenticeships you had to pay for. So I, I'm thinking, all right, I got to have like 5K or something, which I didn't have at the time. I was like, but hopefully I could talk to one of these people and be like, I could work that off <laughs> versus paying for it. 
Uh, so I, I think that was one of the lines I told you when I came in. I was like, oh, well, here's my portfolio. I know apprenticeships cost like three to 5000 I ain't got that. <laughs> <laughs> but I could work, though. And he was like, nah, I don't believe in that and everything. But um, uh, most shops, they look for like some kind of like interest in art. Like I did, like I said, I had my portfolio. It was like a little all over the place. I had some color work, some uh, a little bit of realism because I was still just now getting into that. Um, what's another little thing? You just, uh, yeah, it's you, definitely like you definitely got to show that you want it. Yeah, I think like, what drew me to you, particularly to give you opportunity, was that you you showed a lot of the like qualities that I felt like I had when I was hungry and getting started, and that's why I want like you you really like wanted it. And the fact that you moved all the way from Mississippi to to Atlanta to seek out opportunity to me like spoke volumes. And uh, all right, so after you got the apprenticeship, like what? Like, uh, what were you doing? Like, you know, what what do we have you do around the shop? Uh, pretty much anything, you know. Uh, just you know, it's not a paid thing. You got to work it off. Uh, I was mop, sweeping and mopping the floors, answering uh phones, setting uh, up breaking down. Yeah, setting like up that. breaking down, watching the whole time. But I also was like, well, I was I can't even say I was older because most people start around their early twenties. Uh, but I had been on my own for a while, so I was a little bit on a mature end. So yeah, yeah. it was a lot of things that Theo didn't really have to tell me because, like I said, I've been paying my own bills for a while. Um, I knew what I came here and what I, what I wanted. I was here like six days a week. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, and you and work a part time work, job. Yeah, yeah working a full time full-time job. Full-time job. So I was basically right, putting in. Right, no, you, uh, <laughs> I was. Yeah, like, I was like, these three, new apprentices. Don't, three they, days. They, they less, I'm yeah, out. Yeah, like, so I, essentially, I'm working eighty hours a week and only getting paid for one of the jobs. So right. Yeah, I was just. And how long? It, like, well, you kind of. I had to kind of fast track you, um, just because at the time I I needed another artist. Yeah. Um. So I would say what this was about a year or so. Yeah. I would say yeah. I would say generally though, like. Uh, a regular apprenticeship would probably be like one to two years. Yeah, before you one start. One to two years, yeah. depending on like your learning rate or how fast you want to learn. Yeah. So, so that being said, you know that's that's a general pr- apprenticeship um experience, right? You, you might throw in like some artists and shots might throw some hazing in there stuff. I, I don't really kind of believe in the hazing stuff. I'm more so like I just want to see you work hard, right? Nah, but but um yeah, nowadays though, this new generation of tattooers, a lot of them they see that as um they see apprenticeships as like unfair. Too hard, too long. Um, I even hear now like How that apprenticeship hard, should be paid. Oh yeah, and that, yeah. Was, that was the other thing. And like, that that apprentice should get paid. Oh yeah, your apprentice. Well, <laughs> like, I was yeah. I had to earlier. Like uh, <laughs> even with Theo, even though I put in all those hours, he only required me to be there four days out the week and for four hours. I just right. did extra. Right, and you got. I mean, you showed that drive, and that's why you know your career took off the way it did. But but nowadays, you got so many people like um. You were saying, bro, Elijah, uh, it's like you you put into these people, and then they just, all right, all right, I know enough. Let me let me take it. And let me go. I like, let me skip the rest of the process. I just want to go ahead and start making money and, mm-hmm. and getting on IG and doing this and that. So, like, what do y'all think about um these these new this new this new generation tattooers who just kind of like want to skip apprenticeships and go the self taught route? I definitely route say social media kind of probably like skewing their views because you know they. I mean, it's kind of like how we seen it when we were growing up. It's like rock star lifestyle. Like, oh, are they yeah. doing these badass tattoos? Oh, I could do that tomorrow. Right, yeah. yeah. Social media nah. definitely fucked the game up for <laughs> for Because they'll see, like, uh, we'll post, like, a, a full sleeve or half sleeve. And, you know, even in, like, general senses, most people see that done. They're like, oh, they only took, like, two hours. And, you know, yeah. Ink Master and stuff, they doing these big, uh, lovely pieces in, like, six hours. So, in their mind, they're like, oh, this happens like this all the time. And the actuality... Oh. That's just for that specific situation. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, you're gonna sit there and uh, it's gonna take time. Like right. days, most of the, weeks, yeah, months. Most of them sessions take like two, three sessions, depending on you know how fast the artist is. Mm. It is some artists out there that's pretty fast, but most I won't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I know where you're going though. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, Elijah. So how you how you feel about this this new batch of um, tattooers now, man? Who want to get in the game, but some, I mean, some of them are still, you know, hard workers out there yeah. for sure. But then I feel like a lot of them now are just kind of like they they don't want to put in that work. You know, they they feel entitled. I guess yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the biggest thing that we've been running into lately is like a sense of entitlement and a lack of drive. So it's like yeah. Yeah. those, like I don't know how you can have both of those. Right. They right. they don't seem to add up to me. Um, <laughs> no, that's from, real. 
from recent experiences with us at the shop, um, we had an apprentice very recently. So what we did was we created contracts for the apprentices. Mm -hmm. Same, same. Um, because, and we just started doing that because prior to, people would, would literally come in, learn from us, not not touch a broom, not clean a bathroom, not fill out a, not talk to a, a client that came through the door, nothing. Just right. came in, sat by us, learned some stuff and left. How, how, many, how long was that pattern happening? Like how many, How did you kind of have an estimate of how long they'll stay and do that to you to the point where you said, yo, I got to get these contracts now, like maybe um, a month, it, two months? Well, people were just doing it throughout the, my whole time, okay. like literally as a like a tattoo art, like a, a reputable tattoo artist. So okay. pretty much any sense, but you got to also remember, I, I tattoo with with Tony, like like one of the 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 earliest black tattooer tattooers in North Georgia. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So right. Tony was like well known, like tattooed a lot of celebrities and stuff like oh, yeah. that so people wanted to be next to tony all the time mm -hmm. so people would come in and just be you like yo. all the time yeah, yeah they'd be like yo tony 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 like and i i used to see it from from the outside looking and not really understanding at the time but everybody would come in and use tony like and it never yeah. stopped and tony's been tattooing 20 plus years okay. so i'm and tony talks about it all the time like he was like since he's been tattooing i'm the only person that's ever stuck around like every other person has always yeah. came and this, that, and the third, and then it was like, all right, cool, I got enough, I'm out, right. and yeah. never brought anything back. So it it kept happening, and me and Tony was like, bro, like I was like, all right, cool, let's do, let's do for whoever our next apprentices are, let's do yeah. um, contracts. You want to protect your time, you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So we ended up getting two apprentices at the same time, just just random like and life work yeah they both came in at the same time or whatever so one of the apprentices of the two we still have um and then the other one she had already did an apprenticeship um at another shop and she paid for her apprenticeship and the dude kind of like not ripped her off yeah side. according to how she how she or like from her side yeah from her yeah. side of it and and from from how she made it seem like and of course like I'm not discrediting if that did or didn't happen I can't say for sure mm -hmm. because like you know things always sound one way and then when you get to know the yeah. person right. then you can see how there there kind of there could have been manipulation of her story or whatever yeah. so with that being said um she was there our con and our contracts are like super lenient. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go into super detail, but for the most for for the general gist, it was like at least six months before you even start thinking about tattooing yeah. on on people. Oh, and then yeah, after like that. that, you can start like coming up with like flash and tattooing your own clients because yeah. we don't want you tattooing yeah. walk-ins no, and you're not ready yet. No, so definitely. at least six months, at yeah. least six at months least. before yeah. before yeah. the end. But yeah. then once you start like tattooing on real skin, you can charge for those or whatever. So you can start making money. It's just yeah. at least go through six months of giving to the shop. Yeah, and yeah. Then, you're worth it. Then. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very fair. I mean, so. Yeah. So with that being said, literally four, four, five months in, four and a half, five months in, she comes to us and tells us that she thinks um, once the six months gets here, she just wants to leave and break the con or leave and go open up her own oh, space wow. or whatever. Okay. And yeah. so I ask her or whatever. I'm just like, what makes, what made you come to that conclusion that you want to do mm -hmm. that? And she said she felt like me and Tony were was not. We weren't giving her any any knowledge or whatever That's to crazy, like. to 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 become a, a a good tattoo artist. Okay. So number one, if we're not giving you knowledge, then what makes you feel like you're ready to go open your own shop? Exactly. That doesn't yep. make sense. Mm -hmm. That that literally the, ma that, the math ain't math. Yeah, right there. not at all. <laughs> so that's number one. Number two. Um, she was just she she had no like absolutely no drive. Our other apprentice pretty much did ninety percent of the work, and she would eat off the back of her right. by her doing everything and mm -hmm. then making it seem like she would do stuff. And I had multiple conversations with her. Like one time, she kept showing up late, and I told her, "Hey, I just want you to know, like, I, I'm not cool with you showing up late. I need you to be here on Did time." Did she have like a, a a job outside of tattooing? Or uh, she did, but it wasn't on the days that she was at the shop. Gotcha. So she, she really didn't have an excuse. Yeah, so she would be, she was off and on, like, mm -hmm. days that she wasn't at that job, she would work at the shop. So I was like, stop showing up late, please. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't want us to have an issue here, so I'm letting you right. know this. Yeah. She was like, okay, I understand. I'm sorry about that. That wasn't my intentions, blah, blah, blah. 
the next day that morning or could have could have been the night before or something like that. She texted me, was like, hey, I just want you to know I heard every word you said, but um, they're having a uh, uh, $31 piercing special. It was like Friday the 13th or something like that or $13. So so I'm going to go to that. So I might be late, but after that, this will be my last time being late. The very next day. After that? How'd you, how'd you react to that, bro? Because I, I didn't say anything. I didn't even oh, yeah. respond. I, I waited. I waited. I, I, well, some I was stuff like, is better I, to say in person. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, let yeah, her smart, make smart. the decision mm-hmm. to see if she was going to follow mm-hmm. through with that or if she was going to come to her senses and be like, nah, that's probably not a good idea. So she did it, and she came to the shop, and I'm like, yo. Went through the whole day. I let her go through her whole tat, uh, apprentice shift before she left. I was like, hey, look. Ain't no more tattooing on fake skin for mm-hmm. X amount of time. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, like that, you lost your privileges on that. Like, you need mm-hmm. to just focus on either drawing in your book and cleaning and all the other stuff, but don't even, because all she wanted to do was come in, put her headphones in, and tattoo fake skin all day and not right. actually do apprentice yeah. duties or whatever. Yeah. 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 Do you think that sh- uh, during apprenticeship, people also don't, they just want to tattoo, but they don't want to understand the business as well? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I got to get into that as well. Okay. Like, it's so deep, bro. Yeah, that, um, it's, it's, yeah that's that was just more like building bad habits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's the thing too is is like artists think that you just work or apprentices. I would say think that working on this practice skin over and over is gonna like make them better. It's like first of all, like the practice skin is good for like you learning the machine, right? Your your, your strokes weight. maybe right, but the bulk of the knowledge is you in the field, like right behind your mentor, asking questions, really paying attention. Like, let me add this before you even get there. Yeah. She was there for, like I said, almost five months, never, one time, and she apprenticed under the shop, which means she could learn from any person in the shop. We had, mm-hmm. when, she bought, when she when she got there, we had four artists already. She never sat down, pulled up a chair next to not one artist and actually learned anything. And then, she, and then during her exit, when right. she was telling us why she had an issue, I was like, yo, you've never shadowed once. Right. I was like, you've never asked any other question other than what needles are we using? What and she, and that's and, the most basic question. And she said, ask. she said, I, she, I was like, and I told her, I was like, you never asked why you're, I'm using this needle. You just asked yeah. what needle am I using? You just asked this you and just voltage, kept saying the same thing every stroke. time. Exactly. And I was like, you never asked any, like, why this, why that. How did you that? create this exactly. shadow? Right. And she said, I don't know what I'm supposed to ask. You guys are supposed to tell me. Well, that's why you got to sit there well, and watch. You ask questions. And then you exactly. figure out what you don't know. Exactly. You, yeah. Like, how am I going to tell you right. what you don't know? Exactly. I don't know. You I, probably I, don't know what yeah, needle size I'm using. I can't read your mind. Yeah, exactly. I don't know I can, what you don't know. I could literally go watch artists at a convention one time for like 15 minutes and pick up so much knowledge just by watching that artist. Yeah. Like, when, when I tell people, Apprentices or even artists who want to get better. It's like just come in and watch. Like me telling you some some what needle sizes I use and what ink I use won't matter. make you better. Yeah, like you gotta. You really might not use the same. Watch and yeah, yeah. And apply it. You know what I'm saying? So now it's yeah to me stuff like that is is that kind of attitude and lack of drive, like you said, is what kills me um, as a mentor. And yeah. so, but like you said, a lot of times this new generation will look at us. They be like, oh, you guys are just. You know, gatekeeping or just being lazy and this and that. Like, no, you don't. Another thing I see a lot of, because um, just like most mm-hmm. of us have our humble beginnings, mm-hmm. they were like, well, you started off learning on your own. So a lot of them get that mindset mm-hmm. too. Right. For sure. And But so, I suck while I started off on my own. Like, I, I got better because when I had the drive to to want to get better and I went and get, uh, sought that knowledge from as many artists as I could. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's not that you just can't stay in your own bubble. Expect mm-hmm. you to get better, like, mm-hmm. and then, um, yeah. And the fact, like, what do you think about these these apprentices or young artists who go and open in private studios? Like, so when I they, can actually, yeah, uh, piggyback off that. Um, so well, I was telling you, Elias, like, being on TikTok, it's actually a trend where people are low key feeling like it's a trophy to put self taught in their bio in any social media platform, and it's to the point where when I was tattooing on TikTok, I came back to Theo and Lartez and was saying, hey, these people are like apprenticeships is not even worth it no more. Like, the newer generation are straight up they, saying it. They that. think it's a badge to struggle. Yeah, it, it's like, look at me. <laughs> look at my origin story. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, I mean, do you, well, okay, since you going off that, I would say, do y'all think art, uh, artists who go through a proper apprenticeship and pay their dues, like, get better faster in their career Absolutely. than the self-taught artist, artists? Um, me, from my experience, from what I've seen, yes, I okay, agree yeah. that uh, I think that um, people that go through a traditional apprenticeship 
or actually learn from artists right, on a right. consistent basis, get better, mm-hmm. faster. Because, like I said, I was tattooed for about a year before I got to the shop, and I got mm-hmm. I received so much more knowledge and got so much more better in like the first three months I was at the shop in comparison to that whole year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like myself. marketing, yeah, yeah. networking. Yeah, like no, not even that, just, just literally tattooing. Yeah, literally, literally tattooing. Just tattooing yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because like it was yeah. like yeah. I was able to be there and once again see get the knowledge that yeah, I needed. See the ask, different techniques. Yeah, like okay. if I ask you a question, I'm I'm watching a YouTube video and I can only ask questions through the comments and somebody right. answers. You gotta wait. Don't, yeah, that still don't tell me enough. But if I can be there and see things like it that's right. a that's a big difference. I'm glad you said it because I was doing the same thing before I got an apprenticeship with him. You know, I'll watch YouTube. I mean, at at the time, YouTube didn't have as many tattoo yeah, videos as it got now. Yeah, yeah, but sure. just even then, like, they'll show you tattooing, but it's like, damn, I don't know why you're doing this, and I can't right. do this through this screen. Nah, so that's yeah. when I realized, like, nah, I got to be, like, next to a person. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's the only way I'm going to learn this. Like, I can and see it, because I am a, vis- a visual learner, mm-hmm. but it's it's definitely different versus, like, yeah. seeing it through that screen and in person. For sure, because you, you're... you're 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 not limited to just what you're seeing when when you're actually in person because you can sit there and watch and not ask any questions or you every time something comes up you'll be like oh I noticed that you dipped in this cup before you dipped in that cup and then if you're watching you you can't like you don't get all of those mm-hmm. small nuances of learning those those little tips on how to be better mm-hmm, or whatever mm-hmm. so I feel like yeah I feel like people want to say self taught or whatever because they feel like Everybody wants to be self anything, yeah, self made, self yeah, self. self this, self that, and nobody is self anything. Like right, it's literally nah. impossible to be I self. Tell people anything. I need help. Exactly. Yeah, like it's literally impossible. Even even if you taught yourself everything, anything that you learned from somebody along the way, you are no longer self because you had to get it from somewhere else. Countries right. weren't built by one person. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like even people that didn't go through a traditional apprenticeship. They'll they'll work at a shop and get good at the shop, and in exactly. their mind, they're gonna tell themselves, "I would have gotten this way regardless if I came here or not." Right. And right. people don't understand that. People don't understand, especially like the way our shop ran. We, like I said, we were like being so giving and stuff like that. People don't realize like there's luxury in not yeah. being forced to, because there's shops that are gonna force you to do yeah. walk-ins and force you to do every tattoo that comes through to force you to do whatever. Like with us, we were super lenient on everything. So it's right. like, if you came in and you really didn't know much, we still wanted to try to groom you to be a good artist and not try to force you, force like the the negative sides of right. coming up and tattooing mm-hmm. To like go make this money, yeah, for me. exactly. Yeah, make the money like, for me. Right. You, exactly. you really cared about Shut me up. as an artist. Bro. Exactly. So we we tried to help, like, and that's a hard balance. Yeah, like we tried to help grow artists so that way they can they can um they can learn the way they want to learn rather than being forced to do anything. Yeah. And I felt like it helped them. It helps them grow. And then, like I said, they we give them that, and then it's just like, oh well, Take off and, yeah, yeah. So especially with apprentices, and like I said, the the most recent one that that we had that happened with, she like I said, she didn't do much, and then and now, and the reason why she really wanted to leave so so that way she can just go be an artist, and so now she's quote unquote an artist and stuff like that. Good luck okay. to her, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's different and, between a tattoo artist and a person who do tattoos. And, and also, let me add, um, if 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 in a, in a a mentor is like stopping you for, or is trying to take their time with letting you tattoo on on skin. It's because more than likely, if something doesn't go the way it should as a tattoo, like if you're tattooing is and, and you don't do good or whatever the case is, the shop has to answer that. So we're responsible for mm-hmm. it for the, yeah, your yeah. output. It's so our it's not like on the yeah. Line. So yeah. it's not like we're trying to stop you from because we just want because everybody thinks we're just here for free labor. Like that's not what right. the situation no. is. Like we're we're not making no real money off. Like we can clean a shop ourselves. Yeah. Like it's like the you we want you to do that because it, it teaches you a work ethic and it, you know it it creates that that hustle in you. You know, say I can do this, that, and that. And all these things at the same and, time, and you that's know? The, and that's the biggest thing is creating that foundation because so much of that goes hand in hand yeah. with being a tattoo mm-hmm. artist. Right. And, and on top of that, it's like, if especially if I'm somebody that went through an apprenticeship and had to go through all of this, why am I just going to give a random person everything that I, I know yeah. knowledge wise, just because you say, Hey, I want to learn how to tattoo. Exactly. So you like, so you mean, I, you mean to tell me I went through months of cleaning the bathroom and doing, breaking up, breaking down and setting up and all this other stuff, just so I can just tell you just cause you say you want to learn. Like, yeah. let's be honest. You should go through the same things. Uber I wasn't around. 
It's uh-huh. a privilege. Like Uber and Lyft stuff. wasn't around, yeah. so you probably had to catch the bus or yeah, whatever listen, car you had to do, whatever yeah, drop like, off. Whatever I meant, I meant just if you're an apprentice looking for one, just make sure like you like care care about who you're apprenticing and what and and where you're apprenticing so, yeah. first. So like give like for people who are out there who who are watching and they, they still wanna do this. They still want to get that apprenticeship. Like, what what are the tips that you give them to actually like successfully find an apprenticeship? Because it is hard to, to find one when you get one. Um, yeah, it's it's super hard to find to find an apprenticeship. I would just say, don't be afraid of hearing no. Is the is the biggest yeah, thing? Definitely not. Yeah, don't be afraid of hearing no. Like, no doesn't mean anything. It's just like, all right, cool, not for me. Exactly. So, um, at luckily, your job, do you encourage people to at least just watch? Yeah, no. like, like, yeah, just be it, just be in the industry if okay. if that's the if that's the yeah. the route you want to take. But I don't, I don't, me personally, I just say just find, just go get an apprenticeship, and and obviously from somebody that that you feel like is gonna give you the the knowledge that you that you want for sure. But um, yeah, just don't be afraid to, to hear no, and then once you once you get your an apprenticeship, your once you get your apprenticeship. Show show why you're valuable to to yeah. your mentor. Like if mm-hmm. if your mentor still has to do everything, then why do they need you? Like right. if they still have to if they still have to do all the thing the same things they would have to do if you weren't there, then why are you there? Right. So make make yourself valuable. Make sure make yourself useful. Try to because the bigger you can make the shop, the bigger the shop can make you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Be a team player. Yeah, exactly. be a team player. Yeah, that's really it. Yeah, that's the that's the biggest tip. Be a team player. Like yeah, my biggest thing would be uh People gotta realize, like being a tattoo artist is is a privilege. You know, it's it's not a right. Oh, forever say it's, that. Yeah, it's it's not. Um, just because you you feel like you you should be a tattoo artist doesn't mean like you have the right to become one. Like, so shoot, I wanted to be a dancer yeah, and a yeah, MMA this, fighter this professional. Is, this is one of the best things in the world anyone could do. Like, we we literally get to draw on people for a living and make you know as much money as we want from it. So, luxury. so if someone, if an artist is willing to give you their time, efforts. And um and to to pour into you, to to create an artist out of you, then don't let it go to waste. Like to me, that's the biggest thing. Is like these these people they get apprenticeships and they they come in and be lazy. They have no drive. They they don't want to help out. Um, they wait for their mentor to tell them like any like you like I shouldn't have to tell you to to set up and come here and watch me clean the shop and to draw. You know, <laughs> it's like that that should be something. That it's you want to do, yeah, yeah, because mm-hmm. you yeah. you really want this, right? Yeah. So, um, if you if you get an apprenticeship, knowing that it's so hard, like, don't waste your time. Like, this might be your only opportunity to to really get in the, in the industry. So, if you get one, like, don't fuck it up. Yeah, <laughs> just sure. just put that work sure. in. Whatever they it's ask all about you to do good it. timing too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then also, let me add, don't don't focus on what you're doing now because it's going to be so small in the grand scheme of mm-hmm. things. So, like I said, Tony's been tattooing 20 years and he went yeah. through his apprenticeship. I don't know how long how long his apprenticeship was, but let's call it 6 months. If he did 6 months of grunt work in comparison to 20 years of a successful right. tattoo career, then why are you so focused on what you're doing right exactly. now because mm-hmm. that, all of this is to pay off for that next exactly. 20 years for you. You're can, not even going to remember that exactly. 6 months of so, hard work, yeah. So you could provide for yourself, provide for exactly. your family, all these other things. Right. You are now getting a key to to the rest of your life. So if you're so concerned, oh man, I, I I've been coming in every single day sweeping and cleaning. Like so what? Like right. who cares? And you're still gonna have to continue to clean every single day yeah. as a tattoo artist. You exactly. know how yo mop Friday, you to, right? You know how to, how clean you have to be as a tattoo artist. But just, yeah, yeah, don't don't focus on that small little section of you because that's part of your career. So people get so they want that microwavable success. So they just want everything so fast. Mm-hmm. Just focus. Just 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 do what you have to do now, so you don't have to do what you don't want to do later. And that and yeah. it's it's that simple or whatever. Yeah. So All just right. want to add that. Shout out to uh, our current two apprentices right now. Um, okay, okay. I ain't gonna say their names just in case they like. You never know if somebody decides to yeah. to burn us later. But right now <laughs> yeah. we we cool with y'all. Y'all doing a good job. Y'all know who y'all are. Keep to, it up. Keep yeah, it up. Yeah, keep it up. Keep it <laughs> all up. All adults. Please. Y'all know what to do. So after all of that being said, um, I brought it up earlier, but so. There was a hot topic that uh I saw. It was like a it was another tattoo podcast, right? They uh they had got a question and it was saying something like uh should apprentices should apprentices be paid um by yeah. the the shop? And of course like, you know, the the mentors, the artists were like, "Hell no," right? But then I looked in the comments, man, and I was seeing like all these people who weren't tattoo artists were like, 
yeah, it should be paid, you know, it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's a trade, this and that, they're working hard, this and that, and my whole, like, thing was, like, they're being paid with the knowledge uh, to have this amazing career, so uh, what what do y'all feel on that, like? I was going to say, even at corporate jobs that do the interns, you don't get the actual pay, you either get nothing yeah. or it's, like, half of it or some shit like that. Right. I mean, or even if you go to college, you pay the college Yeah. to, to, to get a degree. You know, um, and oh, then that's the thing. Do you think the apprentices to pay? Um, I personally, I don't believe in um charging a, a people to to get an apprenticeship. Um, I feel like they pay me back by by working for the shop, being loyal, um, and and you know just building up with the shop. To me, that's that's how I get my um compensation. I guess you would say. Um, I mean, if I. I don't personally say it's a bad idea if, if you know if a shop or a mentor wants to charge someone just cuz I guess Yo, maybe to see yeah, yeah to yeah. see like how like, serious you are then you know I got no problem with that but I would say if you do charge like someone to be apprentice then you should definitely like make sure you're, you're yeah you're, you're doing a, a great job as a mentor because I I'll be honest there there are bad mentors out there you know not everybody yeah, there, is a good and some people can't mentor. teach yeah yeah, yeah. And they won't say that. They would probably just say, I just need your money anyway. <laughs> yeah. And I'll add to paying for it, and this is just me personally speaking, I feel like if you are an apprentice and you paid for your apprenticeship, I don't feel like you should technically have to do grunt work and all that stuff at that point. I think you should just be able to come in and That's only, a good point. only get the knowledge because at that point it's like a college. Yeah. Because like at, if you go to school and you're paying for school, not telling yeah. You to clean. Just, yeah, they're not telling you to clean up and do all this other stuff. Yeah. They're just yeah. here to give you the knowledge. So yeah. if you are paying for paying for an apprenticeship, your your thing should just that's be in there just learning and that's yeah. it. Like you shouldn't still have to be doing setups and breakdowns unless they're just doing unless that's just a part of like, okay, we want you to do this so we can make sure you're learning. Just yeah. like if you're at a school and they know the proper they, way of cleaning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And another thing, um, to my bad, I want to go back to the self taught and apprentice and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. a, a good reason why you want to get an apprenticeship, a very important reason is because you 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 learn about sterilization and hygiene mm. because that's super, super, oh, super, man. super important. Yeah. Because a lot of self taught artists don't understand why you're rapping certain stuff and and if if they are even rapping things Rocky and stuff like that, people Crazy grab needles with their bare hand. Yeah. Like yeah. the things that people are doing, like you won't know about because you've only learned from YouTube. So right. you only learn the foundation, but you didn't learn about why you should wrap this stuff the up. Policy yeah. regulations. Yeah, well, like most of most self taught self taught artists don't even have mat aside. Yeah, like, right. yeah. yeah, they gonna using yeah they gonna put some soap shit. on. <laughs> yeah, right. Put some hand sanitizer. Trying, on. Yeah. trying to bleach yeah. down everything. Yeah, right. just like, uh, like so. You gotta have that that medical grade stuff. Yeah, exactly. Then, so. Yeah, that, that kills me too. When I see like artists who who are using like unwrapped machines or yeah, they'll have like right. nowadays so, since pens are so um popular. They'll uh, they'll like use like sensi wrap on the grip part of the machine, right. but then they'll leave like the battery part completely uncovered, even though you're touching the battery the yeah. whole time. Yeah. So I'm like, what's the point of that? Like, yeah. you just cover everything. Yeah. But like you said, like when you don't have that proper that proper um upbringing, it's just those bad habits will form because nobody's there to check you. Exactly. So I, that's a, that's a to me a part of the apprenticeship is get is getting checked. It's like when yeah. you do something wrong, your mentor is there to say, hey, don't do that shit. You know. So. Mm -hmm. Not only that, the people in the comments. Those are gonna be the same people who's not gonna even pay for your yep. to get tattooed exactly. by you. Right. Exactly. Like, bro. Those are just people on the internet and we all know the internet don't actually is not a real place. So stop <laughs> going based yeah. off of what you see on the internet and thinking that's that's what, what it really is. Like keyboard like, warriors. Yeah, yeah, bro. So yeah, I would definitely yeah, I want to make sure I, I, I touched on that because I almost forgot. Yeah, don't self talk can can definitely deter you from learning a lot about the the sterile side of it which is probably more important than almost every other thing yeah. because you're affecting somebody's lives so yeah, we right. were and it don't teach you how to work with others either yeah. especially if you come to a point in your career you you want to go to a shop yeah, yeah. No, you know, you you just be that person like, well, why this happening? And it's like, ah, you know, you jumping from people. shop to shop is like, oh, it's everybody else. No, it might yeah. be you. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then and then um we kind of touched on a little bit your apprenticeship is also teaching you, like um, we were talking about earlier, business side of it, cleaning side of it, dedication mm -hmm. and 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 responsibility and keeping up with it. Like for instance, I talk about it all the time. My clients, my clients never show up to my sh to the shop before I do. Never happens. Like I'm always there before my client gets. Yeah, there. you better read your, That's uh, my. Hey, if I say I have a flaw in tattooing, is 
my clients though, I be late, man. So yeah. oh, actually, <laughs> nah, man. I, I, I'm ne- like website. I'm never late. Like um, but I'll I'm, stay late for you. Like <laughs> I'm 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 always like I'm always there before unless you just happen to show up super early. Yeah. That's the only time you're gonna get there before me. But like 90, 90 Eight, 99% of my clients, like I'm gonna be there before you. I'm always right. there roughly at least an hour before. Um, because I build I built that up just off of just sheer just following, following, having guidelines for myself where it's yeah. like, yo, I wanna make sure I'm prepared. So once they get there, design's drawn already. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Station's ready already. Right. Oh, like you got like, high standards for yourself. Yeah, so all of that. So, but I try to I try to convey that to the apprentices where it's like, we want you to get here on time so that way you're used to showing up on time. Get here before the shop opens so that mm-hmm. way when the shop opens, it looks open. Not like it doesn't look like we're getting ready mm-hmm. to open. Yeah. So that's the same thing. Like when you become an artist, I want you to be used to being there before everybody. I want you to be used to already being prepared. I want you to be used to having to clean after you're done, having mm-hmm. to clean before you start. I want you to be used Building to Building those good habits. Yeah, man. like I want you to yeah. be used to having to deal with certain certain aspects. A lot of this stuff goes hand in hand. You yeah. having to deal with this stuff yeah. goes right back into when I when I'm sitting here telling you, "Hey, record this. Take pictures of the take yeah. pictures of this because if you do decide to get to this part of tattooing where you have your own place you're reali- you're going to realize you're going to need this stuff and you're going to mm-hmm. see how important it is so everything that we're teaching you that's not that doesn't seem tattoo related is all tattoo related it's, it's life all, related yeah. mm-hmm. it's Full teaching circuit. you how to be yeah, it's teaching you how to be a person like it's teaching yeah. you how to be responsible and stuff like that like there's so many I feel like tattooing is, is like because of how strict it is, mm-hmm. it can really teach you like the keys to becoming Nuring. successful outside of yeah. so much more. You like, gotta have so much self discipline in this industry, and like, and like you said, it, it should pour over into exactly, other aspects of your life. Exactly. Um, so, all right. So, one last qu- question to y'all about apprenticeships, I would say is how long should an apprentice after they graduate their apprenticeship should they like give to the shop that apprentice them at least like you know stay loyal and help build up that shop. Like, do you feel like until they get to the point where they're like, okay, like, if everything's you've done going enough, right, like, you want to go branch off, do your thing? Yeah, like you said, everything's going right. Like, how much time should they commit to that shop and that mentor? I would say commit to the shop, me personally. Three years. Three years? Okay. Three. Why three? Minimum. Why three? Three, I feel like the first two years you should give back. Like, me personally, like, if you, I agree with that. I feel like double the time you did your apprenticeship, double the time you should give back. If we're going based off average, it's usually a year, like you said, six months at least mm-hmm. to a year, and then after that, you just give back. Um, I'm just one of those, and and it just shows that you could kind of probably see different coworkers. You can see different changes. Definitely two seasons, but that third year, that's probably maybe you branching off. You might learn something new that you can also teach your mentor that they already taught you the fundamentals. So I would say minimum three years, personal opinion though. Yeah, I, I agree with Bryson, uh, the three years, but mine's more of like different reasons because mm-hmm. uh, I, I keep a three-year rule w- mm-hmm. with any new career that you're doing because mm-hmm. uh, usually the first year is like, all right, I'm trying to figure shit out. Second year, it's like, yo, break even year. And the third year is like, okay, I can actually sustain this and you know mm-hmm. keep it going. So mm-hmm. I, that's why I, I would say three years, just to know if this is the thing you actually need to be doing. Right. Okay. Uh, but I did have one more question. I did kind of think of that. Uh, as two apprentices sitting in front of you, Theo, what have you learned from us throughout the years that oh, we've been talking? I mean, a lot, man. <laughs> it's a, like, Tez was my first apprentice, right, Um, ever. So that, like, I'll be honest, like, I was kind of, like, winging it. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um. It was I think I'm a visual learner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like I said, you um you were already like very mature in your mindset. So I really didn't have to like motivate you to do anything. Um it was just more so uh giving you the knowledge to be be successful, right? Mm-hmm. Um and with Bryson, your apprenticeship, um but like honestly, like I said, you you was just I didn't have to do much outside of what you know was required because you you already wanted it so bad. Like you you are had that work ethic in you, um, and you just to me, I would say both of y'all. What y'all show me is like it's okay to um, to to pour into to people and to trust them to to 
take care of your baby, right? So, because to me, the shop is my baby, right? Right. Uh, you know, I, I, my actual son, I got a baby now, but so it's mm-hmm. shop second, right? <laughs> so, Manny, second, Manny. But, <laughs> you second son, <laughs> six, but uh, but like shout out to Lenny, all right? Shout out to Lenny, um, shout out to Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> but but like I said, I y'all been with me and y'all been through the ups and downs and. Like you, you guys know, you guys have the same vision that I got, right? Mm. So that's why I I trust the shop in, in y'all's hands. Like when before, you know, I I wouldn't want to leave the shop more than like a day or two. You know, I wanted to be there all the time because like, all right, I gotta make sure everything's getting ran right, right? But now it's like, okay, like I know like Tez there, if Bryce is there, like things are gonna be getting ran the right way because yeah, we we all care about this the same. So mm. um, to me, yeah, I, I just learned how to, to trust and delegate. Mm. Um, with y'all, that's that's the biggest thing I've probably learned. Oh, do you? Mm-hmm. That's hard. That's hard. Yeah, yeah man. Like I, like I said, when you, like you, when you get your good people come through, man, it, it could definitely yeah. it could it could help change yeah. the shop for the better, man. So especially it's, knowing how rare it is to like find yeah. that, like that's uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's it's like I said, it's it's tough to find, but mm. I, that's one thing I am very particular on, on like people I bring in. Um, I would say. That's the hardest thing is like to to be picky because like a lot of times you'll come across people who like they show a lot of potential and like you know everything sounds good at first but then it's like once I kind of see them more in in the environment and I kind of get more of a feel like okay like like I start to see your flaws now mm-hmm. like okay like uh like I don't know like like maybe we could work this out maybe not I don't know but um so that's the biggest thing is like don't when you when you see those flaws start to come up, like don't be afraid, like as a mentor or as an owner, um, to be like, all right, like I like you, but I don't know if you write for yeah, us, like as a person. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel that. Um, for me, in terms of uh, how long I feel like somebody should stay, I think mine is very situational. I think my biggest thing especially like where I'm at now after going through so many different situations of it. I think the biggest thing is just like your capacity of how you're giving back while you're there. Like how was your time? Mm, how impactful right. you yeah, are. How impactful. Yeah, that's, that's like, cool. Because what, and this took me a long time to realize, so I can speak on like from a personal experience. When I started getting popular as a tattoo artist, I got clouded. Like my ego took over. And everything was Elijah Akeem tattoos, like yeah, Elijah Akeem this, Elijah Akeem that. It wasn't. It didn't, it was no longer about incorporated anymore. It was like, okay, how big can I become? Because I'm mm-hmm. the brand, I'm the face, I'm mm-hmm. this or whatever. Yeah. So, I went through a time where everything was about me. I wasn't. I I didn't think of the the large. The I didn't picture. see the large picture or whatever. Mm-hmm. So now my biggest thing is like. How are you creating opportunities for those around you or whatever? So if this place gave you your your foundation to be able to be who you are, mm-hmm. if somebody hypothetically, and I'm not saying this is a requirement, but if somebody's like, yo, I want to do an interview with you and you do a full interview and never bring up the shop, or right. or yeah. if if it's just like when opportunities come your way, are you trying to extend those opportunities saying, hey, I got this opportunity. Right. Do y'all want to be a part of this? Or, oh, I want to do it. Is it cool if I bring them? Yeah. Or no, exactly. or like I see something on the internet and I'm like, oh, this is dope. Let me tell them at the shop. Yeah. Oh, I learned how to take better pictures. Mm-hmm. Let me spread this knowledge exactly. rather than, yeah. oh, I learned oh, about a CPL filter yeah. in the in the filter and all this other stuff, but I'm just going. Right, you don't want to take I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a wait till they ask about right. it. I'm not going like if uh, if if you're constantly learning or if like for instance we were talking about the like the reviews and stuff. Mm-hmm. Try to help us get review like little right, stuff yeah. like that. Show that you care about where you are, exactly. and then if you decide to go. I know your time here. You you left the yeah. you left you this to. environment in a mm-hmm. better situation than mm-hmm. what it was when yeah. you got here. Mm-hmm. But if you if you come and then you leave and then nothing right. came from you being there, then it's just like and it's like and it's not me even. I wouldn't have like any ill will towards like people that that have that because they might not know any better. Because yeah, they might not know. A lot of times it happens to experience. Like I said, right. it yeah. wasn't until I experienced it when exactly. I learned it. Yep. So I went through the same situation where I only cared about myself. Like I didn't, yeah. I wasn't worried about no other artists and all this mm-hmm. other stuff. I was like, yo, it's about me, right. stuff like that. But 
I just feel like if you're impactful to the shop, then there's really no time limit on it. Um, at, I will, I'll say at least at, at the bare minimum a year if you're yeah, actually yeah. focusing on the shop throughout yeah. that whole year. Yeah. I would say longer. I, in my mind, it's like, why not be like, yo, I want to start my own shop. Mm -hmm. Would y'all be cool if I made another version right, of this exactly. shop or whatever? Like, the case partner is. together, right? Partner, yeah, partner yeah. together, like or like, stuff like that. Like, why not mm -hmm. if you? If if you, you truly yeah, believe if you, into, if you yeah. truly care about like the mm -hmm. people that you're around and stuff like mm -hmm. that, then like yo, you know what I was thinking? I really want to do my own thing, but can I or whatever the case is. But if you're just saying, "Oh, I don't want to tattoo no more," that's completely different. But yeah. I just feel like there should be there should be a thought process and like yo, and that and that and that's not a requirement. I'm just saying maybe it's just like, just, yeah, 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 just think about it. Just yeah. think about it. Like yo, but um, at the very least, it doesn't matter. Just like just care about the shop right. just want to give back to the shop is enough for me yeah that's really that's, that's um well i can actually theo heard me say this a bunch of times it's actually the shop first then it's theo yeah then anybody else yeah. under that mm -hmm. yeah, yeah nah, that's how that's I how I always the same way too like i'm always trying to push the shop yeah, yeah. I push myself like even like to, if i give any advice i guess that's it's not even to like just apprentices but it's like people if who the want, shop grow yeah. you grow exactly yeah. like and that's for everybody yeah. in the shop. Yeah. So it's exactly, like yeah. we're all we're all washing each other's hands. Like mm -hmm. it's not like I'm doing everything just so I can be bigger. Yeah. Like then we focus on our strong suits. Like me, I kinda like focus more on inventory. Like mm -hmm. I hate running out of stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. like capital. Yeah, he helps me on that, you know. So yeah. it's we all we all, you know what I'm saying, can contribute in different ways, you know. Yeah. But like you said, if you if you help the business grow, it's only going to help your pockets in the long run. Like everybody, like, Bro, so it's like that's it. That, that's yeah. literally how I think. Yeah. So, I, unfortunately, you know, a lot of people in the industry don't have that mindset. It's, it's all about like we'll said, y'all go that me me yeah. phase. Like, yeah. but sometimes like me in the people, same building, but it's yeah. about me though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some people wake up and realize like, okay, like you know what? Nah, it's, we're we're stronger together. But sometimes people never come to that yeah. conclusion. They they think like, all right, I'm. I did this by myself. Be I'm gonna my keep doing it by myself. I build and, so. and yeah, and I like what you said about knowing your 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 strong suits because if you're at a shop and things and certain things aren't the way that you would like to see it, right? If you're if you're there and you're a part of the family, like why not try yeah. to step into that role? Like yo, this this is lacking. Maybe I yeah. can help here. Yeah. So many people get concerned with, oh, I'm just an artist here. Right. So oh, yeah. yeah, a lot of people don't. I'm just yeah. an artist yeah. here, so I'm not I doing that. I just well, they, they, yeah. they, they, you, you own it, so you should pay attention to that and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And like, mm -hmm. and I've seen that happen, and we still kind of go through it every now and then. And mm -hmm. We'll have talks about it where it's just like, yo, like, I mean, if you, if you have an issue, like, let us know because maybe yeah. we don't even see the issue because we're so yeah. focused on yeah. thirty other things. Yo, just just bring it to us, yeah. and then if yeah. we can if we can fix it, we'll we'll do our we'll do yeah. our best to fix Shop it. Shop owners are human too, you know. So yeah. they have flaws and they make mistakes. So it's like you said, just communicate. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But um, but yeah, that's that's a great talk, man. Uh, I would say let's let's transition to our our ending segment. One of our favorite segments is we answer questions mm -hmm. from people. Um, and. We'd like to see everybody's responses. So. Yeah. Before before we answer the question, I just got one quick question. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. How do y'all feel about, or you might already, since you have a shop, you would mm -hmm. know, booth shops doing booth rent and shops you doing percentage. You know what? That's crazy because that's literally the first question uh -oh. I got. <laughs> All right, so yeah. How do I feel about booth rent versus um, paying like a split? So um, I guess for people who aren't where like tattoo shops work kind of like one or two ways. Like you can either uh, pay like a percentage of every tattoo that you do to the shop um, or you pay a weekly or monthly booth rent. Yeah, what I feel about percentage and booth rent, um, honestly, I feel like artists should only have booth rent if they kind of earned it and they have like that clientele built up. So how I, I look at it is like this. It's like you, if you want booth rent, then you shouldn't take walk-ins at the shop. You should only operate on your own clientele. And, um, because at that point you're saying like I don't need the shop to bring me clientele, like I'm, I'm. You just looking for somewhere to work. Yeah, I need. I just need a space, so I'm renting the space. And um, okay, that's cool. That's fine. Like if you want to do that, it's cool. But if if you're an artist who hasn't built up that that clientele yet, you still need to take walk-ins or, um, you know, you you still have days, weeks where you kind of not booked up. Then you should be working on a split. Because honestly, that's it's smarter for for you. Because what on those weeks where you're slow, you, um. You don't have to worry about losing money on the rent, and then uh, not only that, but you're you're taking in walk-ins now, and you can build up your clientele that way. So I feel like, 
like do I feel like certain shops give unfair splits? Um, yeah, I mean, I do yep. feel like the 50-50 yep. is kind of outdated. Um, I, I feel like for, you know, apprentice coming out, yeah, 50-50 is expected, like, at least one year of 50-50. Yeah, uh, uh, I won't go too, too, too deep, but I like how you do your contracts on the percentage. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. And that I mean, keeps me on my toes. I kind of, to give a brief explanation of what you're saying, like, I kind of give, like, all right, you can earn a higher percentage based on, like, mm-hmm. what you bring in, you know, like, so if you reach a certain threshold, and you get it, it yeah. You get an increase in your 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 split because you're you're bringing in more money, so you're gonna make more money. Um, to me, that I feel like that's fair. And um, but but yeah, I feel like if you're getting a fair split, to me that's that's not a problem. Like because the shop, sh- whether it's walk-ins or if they found you through the shop Instagram or they Google the shop, then they looked at your work and picked you. Um, that's still you wouldn't have gotten that without the shop. So you yeah. you know giving a percentage the to the shop yeah is shouldn't be seen as like oh. The shop is taking advantage of me, this and that. It's more like I'm building in, I'm giving into the shop, like I'm helping yeah. build the shop up, which yeah, in turn is going to build. That, that's how I felt about it. Because, uh, you know, at this point in my career, I definitely could do the booth rent, but me personally, yeah. I like doing the split because you're a good shop owner and I see it actively being poured into the shop. So yeah. I never felt like different for us, like splitting. Even when you offered it to me, he's like, oh, you could go to booth rent. I was like, nah. I like I like investing yeah. into the shop. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, that. Like man. the floors, walls, cameras, yeah. all yeah, this. I'm, like, to Especially me, if you like where you're at. Yeah. yeah. Like, why not invest into it? No, I definitely agree. What about what about you, bro? Yeah, um, I'm definitely on the same page. We did booth rent for a long time and I feel like booth rent made people feel as though like they were just like an artist. And yeah, it yeah. added into like um a situation of just I'm just renting a space type stuff, but then the side of like um, they don't want to put in. They didn't see themselves as part of the shop as a exactly, team. Exactly, like because they just seen themselves as just, I'm just like a, a contract. I'm yeah. just here renting out yeah. space. Cool. Um, but then we switched over to to booth rent once we once we or, move locations. Or percentage or yeah yeah I'm sorry that's what I meant yeah percentage. Uh, we switched over to percentage once we move location locations, okay. and um, and yeah I agree. I feel like with with. With boot, I feel like if you're at a shop that's charging you booth rent, there should be. I mean, I'm sorry, charging you percentage. Mm-hmm. You should be able to see where your money is going. Yeah, so right, if yeah. you're just charging a percentage and you you're not getting walk ins, they're not covering supply. Like for for us, we pretty much cover oh, yeah. everything you need other than your tattoo machine, your needles, and your ink. Clarify the same yeah. here. Like well, I, yeah. I cover medical supplies, stuff like that. Like, um, I, you know. I mean, you do I, still yeah. got like basic needles for us. To yeah, use yeah, yeah. Because we yeah. use coils. Yeah, but see. um, but yeah, go ahead, my bad. Yeah, no, no, you good. Um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's like I feel yeah. like if you if and you reinvest, like I said, I, you like I said, you guys just opened that space, yeah, but so I'm sure you're gonna the proof is in the pudding. Yeah, yeah. invest yeah. more quality stuff as you yeah. go on. Exactly. Yeah. So our biggest thing is like we're taking. It's not like we take percentage and we're just trying to be like, okay, let's see how much money we can make off. Yeah. Of you know, like might go take a month to, vacation. We're, we're, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're trying already. to take the money and put it back into the shop. So like mm-hmm. even like right now, running like Facebook ads and stuff like that. Yeah, so same, that way, like the money that we're making from the shop is getting put back into the shop, so that way mm-hmm. it can come back into your pocket or whatever. Exactly. Everything is like a full circle so it's just like if you're doing percentage you're helping the shopman like you said especially mm-hmm. like if you're if you're taking walk-ins or if you're not booked that often or whatever if you work in two three times out the week that's not really too much of nothing on yeah. on both sides so it's like right. if you were doing booth rent you probably wouldn't you'd be struggling and if if you're doing percentage you're not giving a lot so it's like it's a it's a trade off for both parties or whatever mm-hmm. so yeah I agree I feel like percentage is, is fair I think um I think fifty fifty like is like more of an old school thing. Yeah, I don't yeah. think people should still be doing it unless, like you said, you have absolutely no clients. Right, out. right. You you're, just started. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. just, just you just yeah. popped out. Like right. your release just dropped. Okay, yeah. you doing fifty. <laughs> the, the more valuable you make yourself to a shop, I'm nine times out of ten that shop owner is going to be willing to give you a higher exactly. split. Exactly, like, because yeah. they, they don't want to lose you. Yeah. So yeah. they're gonna they're gonna make it like you are essentially like just like musical acts or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like you're essentially like the more valuable you are to us, the more valuable we can be to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're, we we want to work together. Like our right. biggest thing is like keeping everybody to feel like yo, I don't want to leave here. Exactly. Like I like yeah. the situation I got going on. I feel like I feel like I can stay here for for a long time and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And having fair percentage splits. Yeah, it's a part of that or whatever. Yeah. So, like, even when I started at the time, it was 50 50. Yeah, but I did say that first year, once this year is up, I'm not going to be here no more. 
I feel so I made sure I poured it back into the shot. You're not going to be at 50-50, you know what you saying? Yeah, yeah, 50-50. I thought he was like, yo, yeah, I'm yeah. out. Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah, my yeah. Man. He was like, oh, damn. Like, like, no, 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 no. Like, hey, I ain't doing it. I'm like, like, oh, damn. This is very confusing. <laughs> you sit right in front of me on the podcast, going to announce this on the internet? I was just finna say, you didn't see how he looked at first. Like, what you mean by that? <laughs> Bro, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in the camera. Like, my eyes darted over when he said that. I was, he was like, oh, oh damn. Shit. Bryson was, over here plotting. Yeah, that, was, that was there. Like, like, I'm going to be in this I ratio that field. from back in the day where the dude was blinking extra hard. What did he say? Dang. I was all like, right. all right. Yeah. But, yeah. All right, let's go to our next question. Um, let's see. Um, have you ever tattooed someone with bad hygiene? <laughs> Who want to go first? Right. Bryson, I, I think you got it. Hey, man, I don't even want to tell that story, man. <laughs> um, yeah. The short answer is yes. I, yes. We all have. Yeah. Um, but it was so bad that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's honestly, my thing is like. I definitely had. I can actually say I have 10. I, I actually keep count. Yeah. Out of the three years. I haven't had 10. a terrible, terrible, terrible but recently. I, I just smelled oh, some dear? stinky feet. Yeah, yeah, stinky feet is definitely. Had a couple times. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. But um, yeah, stinky feet or just, you know, I I don't. It's like one thing, like if you you could tell if someone put deodorant on and it just wore out, and like yeah, through the session, yeah. like that's cool, I understand. But like when you come in out the you gates, the like, they'll put on deodorant. Like, all right, yeah. man, you oh, didn't aluminum. with the PE before exactly, you came like, here. Like yeah. you know, you about to get your body worked on in a certain way. Like just take a shower and then put some deodorant on, man. I, but um. Thankfully, most of the time, we, I, I, we don't have to deal with that. Like most clients are, are pretty good with that. I would say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can I give a a, ran, a random tip that has nothing to do with hygiene, but just as a yes. client? Um, if for instance, like you're coming to to get your leg tattooed or something like that. Don't wear the tightest jeans you own. Like wear something that oh, makes yeah. it easy to don't want to be chest tattoo. tattoo. You came in with a turtleneck. Yeah, right? like. <laughs> Like and then and then on top of that, like of course we're not being creeps. We're trying to do our job. So mm-hmm. like if you're gonna do that, be comfortable with letting like taking it yeah, off. Yeah, you gonna have to. But like, don't try to keep on like, like oh y'all went on my thigh and then yeah. keep your pant on and try to like, hold it to the side like there's a, like we should have been prepared. Like, yeah, like, 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 like and that's you know, what made right. me think about yeah. it. You saying like yo, you know you're about to get tattooed. Where do you right. like? Yeah. That made me think about that. Like why you, you know wear this to... whole one piece? Right. Like, yeah. You getting your thigh tattooed now? You gotta be up here naked. It's like ah. Like, did you don't make it weird now? Like, like, did you want to be naked, or did you think that we were literally just gonna find a way to pull it to the side? No, it doesn't work like that. I got these scissors. I'm gonna cut it if you want me to. I just, yeah, I just wanted, I just wanted. It was just on my mind. I wanted, I wanted to bring that up. All right. Um. Well, this one, I mean, I'll ask this one, even though I'm pretty sure I know what most of you would answer. Is uh, which which one do you prefer? Do you prefer color realism or black and gray realism? Color realism. Color. Oh, okay. Y'all shocked me on no, that I'm one. Lying. I'm lying. No, I actually yeah. like it. Like, all right. So you like they, doing they it? They saying tattooing it. Yeah, tattoo wise. Yeah, I like. I actually enjoy it. Oh shit! You yeah, got it. Just a long process. So why do you enjoy it? Why don't you? I just like color. Like, I mean, I will say, yeah, color. Like, it's not deep. Tattoos than that. do have. I like, actually a, enjoy a pop color. To it, um, that you know, black and gray won't have just because those bright colors will hit you if it's done right. But it's well, going to take longer to see yeah. that. But you do have to educate your client. The black and gray realism, that's going to be whatever black and gray is with color, just know it's going to be three times as long. Yeah, right. it's, it takes forever. And yeah. all that white so thing. I actually enjoy doing cleaning it. Cleaning out your needles, I mean, blending. I see me. I'll be here 12 um, hours. So Yeah. I ain't going to lie. I did do the squint out when you said color. I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, just, I don't know. I just feel like, and then part of me is like, I don't think color reali- I mean, uh, black and gray realism is harder, but I think people forget that sometimes it's harder to make things translate as yeah. doing black and gray. Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, like I had a piece the other day where she wanted um, a dagger going through flowers with bees and the dagger to be covered in honey. And I'm like, I can't make it look like honey because I don't, I can't yeah. use color. So with with black and gray where we have to really make things transfer or translate as a tattoo without the use of color. Like if I was doing a landscape, if I put blue in the sky, you instantly know it's the sky. Right. But with black and gray, we have to figure out how do I translate this as sky yeah, that's or whatever. True. My, so, my biggest thing is, like especially that. since we mostly tattoo on darker skin tones, the color realism, hey man, finding them, di- especially if you're doing like a color portrait, finding yeah. them right tones that like separate from the skin. Exactly, yeah. That right. is you gotta have, stressful. Like, yeah. I ain't never did a color portrait in my life, so I can't, yeah, like, it's, I can't imagine. It, it's like, not only do you have to like worry about the whole technical side of like 
blending in, saturated, right? But now, like you said, like, all right, I got to make sure I pick the right tones that's going to hold up mm, over time. That's going to match with the undertones. Yeah, because okay, you nice. can't go just straight up what you see because, like, all right, now nah, if I'm working on melanated skin, like, I need to have a, a darker darks and, like, lighter lights, you know, to kind of yeah, really right. get that, that pop. See, I wouldn't yeah. know nothing about none of that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, like I said, black and gray has its challenges, too. Like you said, yeah. like, there's certain things that just like, don't translate well in yeah. black and gray. Yeah, yeah and black and gray, in my opinion, is just a little less forgiving because yeah, you can right. blend a different color into yeah. it and switch it up. Yeah. You you make a space too dark in that black and gray, it's, it ain't it's coming there. Back. <laughs> that's, why, yep. that's exactly why I don't do portraits. I say that all the time. Like man, you be doing wait you what? Do lady faces, man. Yeah, that's lady portrait. faces. No, see, I don't uh, classify that as portrait. Okay, I okay. classify a portrait as I'm doing somebody recognizable. So mm, it's like okay. I'm not doing your mom and your dad and your cousin and all these people that you know you can do I, it though. I don't. I literally. I tell people all the hey, time. Hey, he like, said literally. Like, huh? like the, I've, I've never I've, knew. I've done one because even with the lady faces, you can kind of like play with the shadows. A little yeah, bit I can more. do whatever. Yeah, that's I true. Want. That's true. Nobody's gonna to look, look at. Like, yeah, he's like nobody's yeah, gonna look you. at him. Like that doesn't look like so and so. Because it's on no it. one. It did, mm-hmm. like I it's swear just I a thought person. You did portrait. Yeah. So I, but I did do one portrait recently, and it came out fine. Like I did, it was a, a Medusa piece, and half was a skull, and half was Megan Good's face, and it came out really dope. I just didn't post it one because I didn't want people to start literally that's asking. Right. Me oh. And two. Um, you fucked I, up now, I, yeah, and I know, I know, I, I know <laughs> it's out there now. We don't edit it. I, I, I know, I know, kind of like what people want to see, and I just feel like, unfortunately for me, posting skulls isn't one of those things that like the people that follow me want to see. Unfortunately, but it was a super dope piece. I really liked it. Um, okay. But yeah, with that being said, I don't do portraits at all. Like people be like, oh, like especially those lady faces all the time. They're like, oh, can I do my wife? Can you do my mom? Can you do? Um, I tell them all the time. I was like, look, I, I can, can do you somebody that a lot. Yeah, I was like, I yeah. could do somebody of likeness in terms of it can be. Uh, black fa- features, yeah, black yeah. black facial features. Try to pr- uh, focus on yeah, those facial okay. features, but I'm not doing this person because if I shade the nose a little too dark, it's not the the right person anymore. If I yeah. shade the the lip too dark, if I make them a little bit too round, no longer the same person. So to me, that's too much. That's too much pressure on me, I'm especially saying, if yeah. it's like a memorial piece or something like oh, that. Yeah, I just yeah, it's tough. yeah, I can't. I can't. You I know, can't it's those. it's crazy. Uh, speaking about like you and your businesses, it's, it's funny how even your Style has bled even over into this shop mm-hmm. in a sense of, I didn't. I probably say probably twice a month that somebody comes in here with your work and say, "I want this." I'm like, "Hey, this man is right down the street." Oh yeah, it's man. Like, um, yeah, I've, 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 I've silently said that where I feel like I helped oh, you, change the you, landscape. You don't burst yeah, the whole, like, bro, on, like, like, like skin tones, yeah. like, cause you don't see a lot of artists. Your your style has bled style. into here. Yeah, like, you yeah. see it a lot of times on like pale light skin mm-hmm. but like yeah. you know how to execute that fine line real soft smooth look on melanated skin yeah. too and it's dude appreciate that's, that, that's dope mm-hmm. appreciate that yeah i i because i've talked about it like i'll get on pinterest and i can't get on pinterest without like my work being See, there. yeah like, but, i gotta look at myself for yeah and then, and then so it's like but i i never took it as like oh this that and the third but yeah. i just wasn't sure if this was just uh uh one of those things was like kind of like in my own mind or mm-hmm. is this like because you know pinterest kind of shows you what you're what you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're yeah, like, interested in yeah. it's right. pinterest so i wasn't sure if it was like a real thing but yeah i felt like i kind of ushered in a a new not a new style by any means but yeah. like the fact of I don't feel like people were tattooing um even just black like black representation that yeah, much. Exactly. Yeah, I started yeah. doing Innovating like, you, like, like people yeah. weren't using like I used to when I was doing faces on people mm-hmm. m- most of the time they used to be white at first and then yeah. one day I was like bro like I was like yo why is there not black faces yeah. on people? So right. I started yeah. doing, I started just taking a style that already exists and I was like, yo, let's just put black faces in all of them every mm-hmm. single time we yeah. can. And now, like I said, I see I see it all the time. Like a lot of times if I go on people's like Instagram accounts, if you tattoo black people nine times out of 10, I've been on your Instagram account and you've done something that was, yeah, that started right, like that started by yeah. me or whatever. Right. And I'm one of those people. I don't care about people taking my designs. Like mm-hmm. my biggest thing is do a good job for your client. That's right. all I care about. Yeah. As long as the piece is executed well, that's all I care about. Um, so I used to be on my high horse about man, y'all stealing my design. Like, I was, yeah, <laughs> eventually you, you say you know you can do. You, you can, take yeah, it as like, a compliment. Okay, stop yeah. a person yeah. in Italy. Yeah. Now, now I take it as a compliment. Where it's yeah. just like yo, like I don't personally duplicate my own pieces. Um, right. but like if somebody else does it, like I said, just do it. Do it. Yeah. Good do it because right. it, it's helping all of us. Like the better you do it, the more people are gonna want this style and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, I definitely wanted you you to know that. Yeah, it, it, it ruined my pockets because now everybody's <laughs> doing it, and now they just go into to this, that, and the third that's not doing a good job, and mm-hmm. they just be like, "Well, he charges this much, even though he 
started it, mm. so he's overpriced. They look at me like I'm the overpriced person, even though they'll learn when they gotta get that cover up. Yeah, down the line, yeah. So. yeah not, didn't come out like this. Go ahead, tell him you don't do cover ups. Oh, like I was literally at um um Music Midtown <clears throat> or whatever it was that uh that uh music show they had in uh, Piedmont Park uh, last year, towards the end of last year, girl walked right past me with my design on her arm. Just, Yo, that's yeah, crazy. Not knowing I did it, walked like, right past me. Yeah. Oh, no, I, now, I knew that. I didn't do it. Ah, <laughs> damn. It. Like, it, it's a goddamn it's, nine bowl traditional. Yeah, that ain't me. <laughs> it, it's, ve- it's very rare that I see um, pieces that are done the way I would do it, I would yeah, say. Because right. I'm not saying they're bad. They're just not how I would do it. Yeah, so. right. No, nah, you, you can definitely execute it. Yes, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. So I will say, yeah, you definitely, like, the black and gray has bled into your region. Yeah, even so out y'all, y'all heard it here first. I didn't say it. Hey! They said, they said it. That's on them. <laughs> I didn't know what that button do. I was like, that, that ain't the yellow. All right. We got time for one more question. Um, this right. is a fun one. Um, which celebrity would you offer a free tattoo on, or, like, which celebrity would you just love to do a tattoo Gabrielle on? Gabrielle Union. Okay, that was quick. So, uh, what's up? What's up? Hey, what's up? Know, everybody, everybody ain't no seeker. Got real right. union. By D way, he gonna be standing right over your shoulder. You, you cool with that? He be all right. Okay, that's all right. Man, that's tall man. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> but what is, yeah. I will say, um, celebrity. You know, I always thought differently, and I've always said this. Like, even coming into the tattoo industry, a lot of people be like, wanted to be the next celebrity tattoo artist. Over. Like, they want to tattoo LeBron mm-hmm. or maybe Michael Jordan. I'm actually trying to get better in a sense of I want to, like, tattoo LeBron's son. Like, I'm trying to work on the next generation. So okay. when these young guys who's going to be in the NBA, they're going to have great tattoos. Because what gets on me is some of these celebrities, Getting the worst like, tattoos. got the oh, worst yeah. tattoos. The worst. And hopefully this all the time in the yeah. investment of tattooing within the next three to five years that the younger crowd can say, yo, my dad had a fucked up tattoo, but... These new artists, they they can provide. So I always say, I don't look at LeBron. I look at LeBron's son. I, w- I want to add on that real quick. Part of this is what I believe. Part of the reason why a lot of the the celebrities and stuff like that don't get the the best tattoos, even though they can afford it, is because for at least this is from my perception of it. They don't. They most people don't understand right. what the difference between a bad, good, and a great mm-hmm. tattoo is. Right. Yeah. And I always say this all the time. There's a hierarchy of like tattoo artists that for us, we would have so many levels to it. But for the for the general population, it's literally people that tattoo in the crib, mm-hmm. people that work in a shop, but they're they're cool. The good artist and then the great artist. Right. And that's it. So a good artist can literally be anybody from all of us all the way down to somebody in their first year right. of tattooing. Right. And there's so, tiers amongst the tiers. Exactly. Right. Yeah, so yeah. for 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 the outside world, everybody's just a good artist. So right, right. Yeah. I'm no Consumer better. That, and that's why yeah. I said what I said earlier. I'm no better than the person that's taking my design and creating and is not doing as good of a job as me because they don't see all those yeah. fine little things yeah, that exactly. and making it mm-hmm. what it is. So in their mind, they still like, instead of paying me what I charge, them paying what they paid was still 100% worth it to them because they don't understand the, the longevity, the the, yeah. the the small details and all those other, all those other things. And then though, there's the people above that are, that are like, Mash Cow and right. and um Steve Butcher, and, yeah, Steve Butcher. Yeah. and those are the upper echelon Elites, where yeah. nobody can deny how great yeah, they are. That's, right. So that's a great way to. That's put the reason yeah, that's why you see it. rappers and celebrities and stuff get tattoos that we find aren't good, mm-hmm. but the people, their fans, and all those other people, and the artists and stuff like, or um, and the 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 clients like the LeBron James and all those people, yeah, they don't know that their tattoo isn't as good as it could be if exactly. they did more research, yeah. and exactly. that's the reason why. And they, they we, probably we got be like. Yo, why'd you go to them? It's because yeah. they don't know any better. Right. They have no idea. They got yes Mike Tyson did. So they like, yeah, that's a dope he got tattoo. A nice tattoo on his chest. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Yeah. Yeah. Look, like he did his he research. He started off oh, getting bad tattoos, yeah. but now he's getting good work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I noticed that too. Now some of these celebrities who started just getting crappy tattoos, now I guess they finally realize like, oh, like my tattoos yeah. suck. Like they, yeah. now they're starting to get better work. Mm-hmm. Um, but so it says you got a celebrity you you would tattoo free or not? Lamelo Ball got some good tattoos. Oh, what is it, Lamelo Ball? Yeah, some. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's better. It's you know, better than I, most. I'm sorry. As far as yeah, like celebrity wise, like I'm one of those few people that don't really just like look at celebrities like that. Yeah, I could, I could, like uh, attest to that. Like, yeah, you're not really like a big, big on celebrities. 
Yeah, like, would it, would if you come like, into the shop and get tattooed, it don't matter who you are. Oh, yeah, hey, hey, look, Trey Young, Young coming. Yeah. I'm, I'm a huge Hawks fan, so Atlanta fan in general, yeah. But um, yeah, I, w- I would love to just tattoo like a Hawks uh, player, Hawks player. But really, like if I get like a superstar like Trey Young, like that'd be dope. Cause then still be he's gonna be commercial, be everything. But um, Trey Young, if you watching this, yeah. hey, hey, this is yeah. how it happens, shout man. Out, shout out Ice Trade again. Right. Nah, that's hard. I think I think for me it depends on. What comes with it? Am I just tattooing them because it's them, or mm. am I planning on? Is it gonna give me some type of exposure? Because I'm, right. I'm not sure if y'all have tattooed celebrities before. I've tattooed some before, and nothing came of it. So um, it depends. I will say I had a little. It. Like, yeah, it depends yeah. on what I'm getting out of yeah. the situation. Yeah. So if I'm just yeah. tattooing somebody, it's just let's say more for like you're a fan, like you're just a fan of this. Person. Oh, a fan. And just enough say okay. like, well, I got the tattoo. Oh. This person, I look up to it. Type deal. It probably wouldn't make sense, but or if you I just, tattoo on Morgan Freeman, that'd be dope. Okay. Yeah. That skin texture, I'd be like, I, yeah, you say like, hey, damn, I tattoo Morgan Freeman. Yeah. So, so, like for instance, right? This is this is why it's kind of hard, right? Like if I was gonna be able to get some type of exposure off of it or something I know I could mm-hmm. use, it would okay. probably be like something like Beyonce or something like that. Yeah, cause that's uh, because that's worldwide exposure. Yeah. Because Beyonce is is so is so elusive yeah. oh, that that like yeah. most people can't get to her. Like say, most like, people yeah. don't know she already has client. tattoos. I didn't even know that either. Yeah. Exactly. So to be able to say yo, I've tattooed Beyonce, like of course most people are gonna think like. Drake and, and Justin yeah. Bieber and stuff like that, but they already getting tattooed, yeah. so whatever. But to say you tattooed Beyonce, like you would have to be mm, like people are automatically going to rank you. Oh, like uh, Stephen Curry because Stephen she Curry chose you. It. Yeah, um, one of the girls I follow actually tattooed Stephen Curry. Um, yeah, I, I saw her. Um, but so if but if I'm choosing somebody just based off of like me being a fan or something, mm, you're definitely Morgan Freeman for me then. Mm, just a fan, I, man. I'm a fan of a lot of people. Right, it's tough. That's tough. Um, Who they can't talk bad about? You be like, "Hey, man, chill out." <laughs> Damn, that's a tough one. I'm not gonna yeah. lie, bro. Like, cause there's, when you think about it, it's yeah, hard. Like, right? It's hard, oh, bro. Man, that's, that's hard. Okay, but I like to say it's a buddy. If, well, exposure wise, Beyonce. Though. Yeah, yeah. For like, if we're going, okay. if we're going exposure, that's something like that. Like, yeah, Beyonce. Um, super fan. Um, Damn, I don't know. That's tough. That's really tough. Because there's got to be somebody like, oh, I would tattoo T-Pain. T-Pain? Oh, and, he's, oh, and the reason, yeah, he's and the cool. reason he's why cool. is because I feel like T-Pain is fun to be around. Yeah, would like, be I feel like we would have a good time. Like, me and yeah. T-Pain, I feel like, are very similar. Or so, yeah. I feel like me and, me and like T-Pain Dave Chappelle would, would be a good one for yeah, me. Yeah, Dave Chappelle oh, would be yeah. hard or whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Cat Williams. Yeah, I mean... Cat, depending on how you doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cat ones, cat ones, I'd be a little bit more scared. Yeah. I might be a little bit more scared <laughs> about or whatever Uh, in terms of making sure I'd like, you know, I feel like certain artists, they, I mean, certain people, they're going to be like, yo, as long as it looks good enough, I feel yeah. like Cat Williams, I'm like, hold on, man. Right. Yeah. But yeah, Dave Chappelle, by the way, shout out sh- Dave Chappelle. I already got you tattooed on me. So if you oh, let you me did tattoo. You did it. Yeah, I got Dave Chappelle. At, at, it really does. The fucking pancakes. Yeah, <laughs> the pancakes. So shout out oh, Dave Chappelle, bro. So um, matter of fact, yeah, bro. Like, let me let me tattoo you, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, hit up hit you, up bro. Elijah if you yeah, watch yeah, it. Yeah, like, stop playing around, bro. Stop playing, bro. Shout out Dave Chappelle, man. Shout out Dave Chappelle, bro. But uh, but yeah, man, that's I say, man, we we had a good episode, man. We got sure. more than the usual amount. So, yeah. um, if y'all been watching, want to thank y'all. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Want to thank Elijah bro for coming out and being our guest today. Yeah, can I uh, ask something? Okay. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Yeah. Yeah, appreciate that. Appreciate that. Some flowers, man. Nah, nah. We what, what button was that? Uh, the, the yellow one. Yellow, yellow one. one. All right. Yeah, we need to hit that yellow one more one more time for uh, Theo. I'm gonna tell y'all yeah. something. I'm gonna tell y'all something. Uh, that mm. uh, of course y'all probably don't know because why would you? So when I did my very first um, convention, number one, I was terrified to go to a convention because I didn't understand what it was gonna be, how people were gonna act, things like that. Um, did my very first tattoo convention in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, yep, yep. and um. I was just there, and Theo was the very first artist to ever come over and introduce himself to to me, number one, but to the shop as old me and Tony, and just came over and introduced himself and talked to us and actually and actually didn't treat himself like he was better than everyone there or whatever. Like he was like, "Yo, I'm just here. I want to meet people. I want to talk to people." My my booth right over here. Come by, come see what I'm working on. I'm I'm interested to see what you guys got going on and stuff like that. And um, Theo's always been there for me when I was uh when when I first decided to renovate the first time to hire more artists. I was hitting up Theo like, yo, 
How you got you got a uh, you got a receptionist? Uh, do you charge booth rent? Do you do percentage? Uh, how do you do so and so? Like, and he always answered every question. He never he never was one of those. Uh, he was never one of those tattoo artists that was trying to gatekeep. Man, I I appreciate all that, bro. Like, like I said, it's I'm I'm just proud to see like of where like y'all already doing your thing when I first met you, but to to see where you at now, and you and and Tony man is is. It's crazy, man, and I just, I just um, love to meet artists who are passionate and, and just want to to put their all into this industry because I'm the same way, man. So, uh, man, thank you, man. thank you again for coming. Thank you for those kind words, bro. Like I said, you know, if you ever need anything, bro, like, yeah. I got you. We got you, man. Like, I appreciate we, you. Like, we, yeah, we're family yeah. in this industry, man. Oh yeah, it's, it's, we gotta. You know, a lot of artists kind of look at everybody as like competition, this and that. Like, nah, bro, like. We gotta we gotta help each other. It's more than enough for all of us to eat, bro. So again, man, um proud of you, bro. I appreciate you, man. First first podcast for twenty twenty four. Hey, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? And of course. Yeah, we're yeah. tattoo artists. Of course we'll have Elijah Keem on the first <laughs> podcast of twenty twenty four. Yeah, yeah. Show that. Yeah. Nice, man. All right, we out, y'all. All right. Yeah. Peace. Peace.